well worth it. Yeah. Well, all right, all right, all right. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you. This is the Mickey G Podcast. All right. Settle down, settle down. Settle take, down. Yeah, take it easy, you guys. Coming at you live from Mickey G Studio, starring Mickey G. Thank you, thank you. And also your co-host, JB the God Killer. And give it up for our special guest, Aaron David Garza, injury attorney at law. Yeah. Give it up. Hell yeah. Thank you for joining the Mickey G podcast. We have a good show lined up for you guys. And when I say a good show, this is something that we were talking about previously. And that like, you know, you don't, you don't know what's, uh, what we're going to talk about. You don't know what's going to be brought up. You don't know, you know, the topics that we're going to be, uh, we're going to be going through. Well, I am here to tell you guys that for the first time in a long time, I have absolutely nothing prepared (laughs) tonight. That wouldn't be the first time. It wouldn't be the first time, but it's the first time in a long time. Either way, nice. uh, we have Aaron David Garza, injury attorney, on the live stream. Thank you so much for joining us, man. Oh, thank you for having me, man. Yeah, we've been, uh, we've been, we know each other through uh, through high school. We, yeah, we all went to high school together. Myself, JB, and Aaron, and so it's it's like it's pretty insane. See, so transition from um, Aaron. Okay. <laughs> To uh to injury attorney. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was gonna say, man, I mean, uh, before we start, I'm I'm really happy to see you again, man. I'm I'm you know really glad you're doing good and I'm I'm really happy to be here. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's great. Well, it's great to see you as well. You know, it's uh been a long time since high school. Right? Yeah. We're getting <laughs> up there, man. We really are. Yeah. Even college, dude. I mean party a little, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. You mean you and Aaron party? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, this is uh, this is Not one thing much. that you wanted Not to bring much. up to me that when I put up your name in uh, in the post that I got it misspelled. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's kind of commonplace for people to misspell my name anyway. I mean, even at the courthouse, they still put two A's mm. uh, to the point where I just don't even bring it up anymore. So yeah, just kind of let it happen now. I'm probably gonna have to just legally change my name because two, two A's. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just at this point, it's like no one, no one cares. It's like we're just gonna put two A's anyway. Yeah, and do you know I have that same issue too because my name's Mickey, oh, yeah. but it's not spelled exactly like the mouse. It's without the e, I'm so I get it. Oh, I always put yeah. the e, but I do it on purpose. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you know a uh, funny story uh, from high school? I remember. <laughs> I, 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 this isn't a big deal, right? But uh, I remember you had paid our friend Edward uh, to do one of your school projects for for history. Oh my god! Do you remember that? No. <laughs> <laughs> You had paid our good friend Edward, uh, oh. aka Eddie Skunks, to do a, a a history project for you, and what happened was um, he had spelled your name wrong. <laughs> so when you did your own uh, presentation, it, you had your own name was misspelled, and you found out during your presentation. Wait, which which, which class was this? It was for uh, Coach Abdigo. Oh my God! <laughs> if it was gonna be that class, it yeah. was gonna be him because he was my basketball coach. So yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what? If, if I don't remember that, but I feel like that that story kind of checks out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, it, it does make sense. <laughs> That's why. So you said I misspelled. I, like, not only did I misspell it, but I remember that. It just, took you, it, it, it just took you back to that. Yeah, place. and yeah. and do you, and I should have known. Like, do you know what? Yeah, it was Aaron, and but I couldn't remember if he spelled it with two A's or one A. But now I know. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, at least I didn't get into any trouble for that. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm very grateful for <laughs> <that>. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 that's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's because you were the you were the the ball handler, dude. Albert go did you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He had to. He had to keep him happy. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What uh for basketball? Yeah. 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 yeah I played point guard in high school. So. Oh, no. I remember. Man, that brings back so many memories. Yeah. Point guard. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I'm so like not involved in sports to where I, I don't know. I totally forgot the Aaron, positions. Anthony. Tommy. Yeah, Tommy. Yeah, we all. It was crazy because we we grew up playing together. Yeah. Like even uh, through elementary school, middle school, we played in the summers on a travel team with Zach Elizondo. Yeah. Um, 
And yeah, like all, even when we would just hang out, a lot of times we would just go play basketball. And so uh, it really helped with our chemistry. Yeah. Uh, so it was really fun playing with those guys because it was like not only did I get to play with the same set of guys for so long, but I also got to grow up with them. And, yeah. you know, still with Anthony, Tommy, uh, I'm still really good friends with to this yeah, day. So, this I mean, that's pretty awesome. That is that is so uh, genuine. It's so awesome when, like, um, you spend, and I realize how much of a gem that is, Yo, that you yeah. actually, mm -hmm. you know, have close relationships with the people that since, you know, you were a kid. You know? Oh, yeah. I mean, even when you talk to people and, uh, like, we still have a group chat to this day. We still keep up with each other. And just like any other friendship. What's right? the name of the group chat? We're mm -hmm. not going to disclose that <laughs> He's a lawyer. Dude. Actually, he's, he's um, a lawyer. Well, uh, on in, on uh, Snapchat, it's Miami Matt and the Central Texans. So. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. My, yeah. So that, yeah and this, yeah, because, well, Matt, after high school, yeah. he, he, he took off to Florida. Florida. So, uh, but, yeah, like I was saying, whenever I talk to people and I say, well, you know, I, I've known these guys since first grade or kinder or whatever, they freak out right, and they're crazy. like, you need to cherish that because I maybe talked to one, maybe two people I grew up with. Yeah. And so like, you know, it, it, it's very rare. And, and so even when I get reminded of that, it, it just makes me cherish those friendships more. I mean, just yeah. like every other friendship, you know, we go through our ups and downs, we have our fights, but you know, at the end of the day, we're always there for each other. So, yeah. I mean, even they've seen me go from, you know, this guy that they've known growing up to, you know, me going on to, to go to law school, now, pass yeah. the bar, you know, and open up my own practice. So, yeah. yeah. And I mean, they're very happy for me, too. Yeah. That's something we found out. The law school is just one huge study program for the bar. Dude, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was it was a very weird thing. So, I mean, if you all want me to get into like, you know, what law school really is, it was. A situation where, and I don't know if you all are familiar with the Socratic method of teaching. Oh, um, yeah, of course, dude. Yeah. No, so, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so um, usually there's just, you know, regular lectures. You kind of sit down. The teacher, professor kind of goes on what they're talking about. You write down your notes. You come in, take the test, whatever. But in law school, what they do is they have you in assigned seating. So, uh, my first year, which is probably the worst year out of all of them, especially the first semester, because you're not used to what you have to go through. Yeah. And also school sucks, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I went through a lot of it. Yeah. And so um, what ends up happening is they have you in a room and how the room is structured. It's kind of like not circular, but they have it in a way where no matter where you sit, everyone else can see you. Oh, damn. Right. And so uh, my section, they put you in sections your first year. So you have the same classes with these people throughout your first year. Yeah. And uh, what they do is assign seating. They'll tell you, we want you to read pages one through 35 of property law. And we're going to go over, you know, these cases. Ugh. So what ends up happening is they'll have the assigned seating. They'll have your, you know, your, your, your face on where your uh, seat is. And so they'll be like, okay, we're going to go over, you know, this case. Uh, you know, if, if you're there, it's like, oh, Mr. Salceda, you're going to talk about this today. And you don't know. It could be any day. They just randomly pick a student. And so you have to be you know, on your toes. You have to be ready. And so then they call you. And then the first year, I don't know if other law schools uh, do this, but at St. Mary's, they made you stand up. Mm -hmm. And so now you're in a position where the professor is actively asking you questions. And it's not something where it's like, what are the facts of the case? How did they rule? What was the issue? No, they really get into the meat of the case and they say, well, the judge affirmed uh, the decision by the trial court. Uh, do you think they made the right decision? And so the professor's job is really to make you stumble so they can yeah. teach the entire class. And so it's a situation where you're trying as hard as you possibly can to process all the information under pressure because everyone's yeah. kind of watching you. Yeah. And you have to be able to you know, think logically on your feet. And you have to be able to do that all while there's so many people just looking to critique everything you say. Dude, there's um, like, would you would you like say pulling that, nails? No, would you say that it's like uh, like dealing with law? It's a majority of reading. It's like I, I would say for the most part, right? So on my day to day basis, it is good to have a personality that uh, that you can go to court with, mm -hmm. right? Um, because uh, on my you know, my day to day job is is going to court and being able to speak in front of a judge, but when you get into the meat of actually fighting for your clients, being able to um, uh, get good case law that supports your arguments is a huge thing. Um, so 
I, I think reading and writing are the two biggest factors outside of um, public speaking uh, yeah. into being a really good attorney. But that comes into the more of the preparation. Once you get to court, you know, it's more on how you can deliver that message. Yeah. Do you right. feel so guilty when you see little kids who say they want to be a lawyer too? <laughs> not, I mean, not necessarily, man. I, I think the thing is... Don't say that. Don't you ever say that. <laughs> I mean, I want to encourage people to do more. I mean, especially in San Benito, right? Um, yeah. Oh, that's the yeah. worst, dude. Yeah. What the hell? What do you mean, man? I, 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 no, no, I'm not, about the laws, I'm not insulting San Benito, but I'm just saying, like, um, it was, you know... Uh, I, I just feel like uh, so many kids want to be a lawyer, but none of them read like none yeah. of them actually read. So it's like man, you're not only are you are you not going to be a lawyer, but I know <laughs> I know in this moment right now that your your sweet little heart's telling me this, that you're never going to be a lawyer. Like there's nothing you could do. I think the thing is, is like we I think, I think we have to. You don't feel that way? No, I mean, I I'm think, just kidding. Yeah, no, I think we have to do more encouraging right because yeah, yeah, yeah. the thing is usually when you talk to kids yeah. the first thing is like oh my god it's so hard you have to go through x amount of years in schooling you mm -hmm. have to take the lsat you have to pass the bar you have to do all this stuff and you make it seem like this is some insurmountable amount of work you have to do yeah and so uh, the way i look at it as and whenever people look to me for advice on let's say they do want to become a lawyer right it's like, look, it's just like everything else, right? Yeah. Like, like you have a black belt, right? And yeah. it, it didn't come overnight. You right had now? to, no. you had to really work at it. You had to, you know, there were probably days you didn't want to go to the gym, right? Yeah. You didn't. <laughs> all yeah. right, Aaron. Yeah. All right. <laughs> come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. So like, it's something where you just yeah. have to tell kids, um, you know, if, if I could do it, you can. Even, uh, yeah. e even uh, our, our chat. That's why Mickey has a podcast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's why I'm not. A, that's why I'm not a lawyer. I'm mean, not okay. a lawyer. <laughs> I suck at reading. <laughs> it, were your parents really encouraging of of like your journey? Well, yeah. I mean, well, I was about to say it's a long story, but we're on a podcast. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, what really inspired me to become an attorney, man, was, I mean, I was your typical like 18, 19 year old kid in college. I was really thinking about what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And so sometimes I'd sit there, you know, I was up late at night, you know, just kind of figuring out like, what, what, what can I do or what do I want to do? I always knew I wanted to do something kind of in the legal field. So I was a criminal justice major. Oh, wow. right. And so, but my thing was that idea of lawyer was always in the back of my head. And so luckily my father, who's a JP in San Benito, um, knew an attorney. And so he said, well, if you want, you can call him. So I did. I ended up shadowing him for a week. And after that, I absolutely fell in love with it. I nice. mean, the things he did on a day to day basis and the way he explained what he did, um, I just, I loved it. And right. so I knew it was going to be a long journey, but the same way I was like, you just need to let them know work it just it. takes hard work, dedication. So after that, you know, took the LSAT. Luckily, I had the grades and I, I had the LSAT score uh, to get into a few law schools. I, um, I chose St. Mary's in San Antonio. Uh, I went the three years, and those were really rough, too. Uh, law school on its own. And mind you, I also had a part-time job at a law firm while I was going to school. Right. Um, I did clerk for the 13th Court of Appeals as well uh, on the summer down here my first year. Um, I went through those three years, and then the bar was... Man, they, that, that was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my entire life. It was a three-day exam. Oh, and, my God. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, no, so... That was something that I think <laughs> took a, another level of dedication. What the <laughs> <f> <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, it was something where they give you about two and a half to three months after you graduate. You have maybe a weekend after you graduate to be like, okay, you know, I've accomplished this. I have my juris doctorate degree. Yeah. It's great. Now you have to get the bar study. So you have all of your, you know, bar materials and you get tested over every area of Texas law and federal law. Jeez. So how the test was structured, well, it, it's different now, but how I took it was the first day it was a P and E, which is, um, All right, let's try to guess. Let's try to guess. What, what, what is uh JB? What does P and E stand for? P and E. Yeah. Come on, dude. Just guess. I don't know. Personal <laughs> person. And personal <laughs> personal <laughs> and entitlement. All right. Let me guess. People and education. <laughs> Close. Well, not close. But, uh, <laughs> it was a procedure and evidence. So oh, no. It was a. Uh, it's procedure just question. And evidence. Yeah, it's like questions nice. like, oh, um, right, so right. and so filed a petition. How many days do you have to answer? Like twenty-one yeah. days. Whatever. Whatever the answer is, and then you have something called an MPT, 
which is they give you this little packet. And Let's try to guess what an NPT is. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Right. Well, I was going to say, I don't even know what it stands for anymore. <laughs> That's the funny part. So I was like, I was kind of like, man, don't ask me that. You know, I, it, I, it's not going to go well. Um, but uh, they give you this little packet. And so it has kind of like an issue, like a memo issue, yeah. uh, whatever legal issue it is. And then they give you like this fake jurisdiction and a couple of fake cases and then you kind of had to advocate for a certain client by writing down a, a certain argument that they would use. And then they grade that. So that's the first day. The second day was probably the worst day out of all of them. It was a 200 multiple choice exam on federal law. So the thing is, Texas law and federal law are different, not right. completely different. Yeah. But, you know, there are subtle little differences. And so you have to catch those because they'll test you on that. And then the I mean, by that after the second day, your brain is just fried. I remember yeah. uh, one of my good friends, Charlie Hayes, uh, we were really good friends in law school. Uh, he got a hotel room right next to the testing center. And we tried so hard to study after the second day. And it was like our brains were just done, right? Like yeah. there, I couldn't do any more reading. And then the last day was 12 essays on Texas law. Yeah. So, I mean, after all that, it was, it was one of those things... It's so weird because you ask any attorney, none of them felt good after the bar. Like you don't feel confident walking out of that exam. You feel horrible. Did I learn law? Yeah. <laughs> no, like funny enough. I, I didn't learn uh, anything. Yeah, I, actually it was so funny because I felt so discouraged after the second day that I was walking to my car and one of my friends like, where are you going? I was like, I'm going to go apply for the bar in February because I definitely failed this wow, one. It was like, that's and insane. it's so discouraging, man. What's it's, the feeling when you like when you find out that you actually passed it? Oh, man. I mean, it. so it was a weird story for me because usually what happens is they give you kind of an idea of when you're going to uh, get your results. So you have right. to wait a few months. So when I first started, I, I, I took the bar I was lucky enough to get a job as a prosecutor here in Cameron County. And uh, I was kind of learning how to do everything while I was waiting for my bar results. And then even the judges were kind of like, oh, like bar results are coming up. Right. And so oh, it takes a, it, it takes a while and you don't really feel it until that time. Leave me alone. Yeah. Yeah. No, you really feel like that. It's like I already have enough on me right now. Yeah. But then you you the, the, as the time gets closer, you definitely feel a bit more anxious. So uh what, what would happen back then in like 2019 when I, when I passed the bar was there was this judge, it was a uh, Texas, um, Texas Supreme Court justice who would tweet out the day before, like, by the way, guys, bar results will be out tomorrow. And that's when everyone would just go in, like, you're freaking out, right? Yeah. And so the day that the results were open, I tried getting into the website, but it had crashed because everyone was trying to figure out the results. Damn. So <laughs> I couldn't find my results at all. And I was sitting there not knowing if I had passed or not, but some of my friends, uh, and I still have a group chat with my friends in law school yeah. as well. Nice. Um, but they were like, Oh, I passed, I passed. And like everyone was saying, Oh, I passed. And I was the only one who hadn't gotten my results. So I was freaking out, man. And well, one of my uh, one of my friends who worked at a law firm, I guess they got the pass list, and so they asked me, "Is this your test ID number?" And I was like, "Yes, that's mine." It's like, well, like you had passed. So I learned not from the website, but I just right. went to go verify just to make sure. Nice. And I think after I saw that, I mean, it was just I I can't explain that feeling. It's like when you work so hard for something, yeah, and then you're actually able yeah. to accomplish it. It, it was. Did it, it feel unreal? It it really did, man. Uh -huh. Because I mean, think about it. I I had. I had gone through so much schooling, you know, uh, from even high school to college, undergrad, to law school, to taking the LSAT, studying for the bar. And it was like at a certain point, you at that point, you look back and just realize how much it took to get there. Right. And I think that emotion just kind of flooded over me at that, that point where I was just like, man, I, I, I did it. I really did it. But, all together, like how many years was it? Um, seven years. Dang. Yeah. yeah. Seven years of school, man. You have to, uh, well, I mean, if you can do your un undergrad degree sooner, right? Um, yeah. Because that's the prerequisite for getting into law school is yeah. you have to have a bachelor's degree. Yeah. And then, um, you oh, take hey, uh, 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 Chewy told us that, right? 
Yeah, that we need a bachelor's degree. I wasn't here. Yeah. In the thing. Oh, yeah. I was about to say, yeah, JV wasn't here. Yeah, JV wasn't here. I was in Austin. I'm like, yeah, Chewy told us. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I was getting all the fun, the 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 pics of all the fun you all were having over there. Yeah. Julio was just like spamming the group chat with all the photos. We had a blast. It looked like fun. Yeah, it did. It sucks. was there. Oh, he was there too. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. Anthony was Anthony there too. Was there. Yeah, yeah. Anthony, another person we went to high school with as well. Yeah. Shout out. Um, Rich. Rich. Yeah. Richie. Richie. Yeah. All right. Let's just let's throw it all Just list there. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want anybody to Ricky. feel left out. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Viedo. Yeah. <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah. Damn, altogether seven years. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I, I don't know if Chewy touched on this either, um, which I mean, uh, I was going to say, I, I love the guy too, man. I mean, he's, he's a really good guy. Um, he's a brown belt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know. I freaked out. That's uh, why well, I, I knew, I kind of knew he did jujitsu, but I, 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 I freaked out when I found out that you all went to the same gym together. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I, d- I didn't even, I, I didn't even think like, it took me a while to realize like, oh, he's a judge. Like he's really a yeah, judge. Yeah. And, he, yeah. and well, he whoops my ass. And he's a, he's an elected judge too. <laughs> yeah. Well, he works <laughs> alongside with my dad. So they have the, they work in the same office or okay. not necessarily in the same office. They have separate offices, but they work in the same building nice. right across from each other. So they know each other very gotcha. well, man. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Chewy. Let's see all the, all the, the attorneys we know, they know each other. Yeah. yeah. How cool. Well, the, the, yeah. The thing is, especially in Cameron County, it's a very small knit community. Yeah. And so we're uh, protected, Mickey. Yeah. And yeah Mickey's yeah. just worried. Like, what do you mean? I'm worried. What the hell are you talking? About what? What the hell are you talking? People coming after us. Oh no, oh no. If anything, JB is the paranoid one. Like, we're good, dude. Yeah. I, I feel I feel fairly confident that you know we're not going to be sued for libel or anything. Disclaimer. Like that. Put the disclaimer out. Yeah, now. Yeah. yeah. All of these opinions are our own. We're not asserting any of these opinions as facts. Okay. Uh, and so, do not sue us. I re- just remember we got to do that more often. That way, it's like yeah, yeah, that we were covering ourselves. Random disclaimers. You know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Um, but other than that, I, I think after I uh, passed the bar, it was kind of like, well, now I have to learn how to be an attorney. And so in that process, I went from being a prosecutor. Uh, the thing that sucked was six months into my legal career, COVID hit. Right. 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 Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. Ass. yeah. And so the thing was, I, I couldn't really get in the courtroom a whole lot. And the main reason you go to become a prosecutor is it's trial experience yeah, because trial right. experience is, is very valuable. valuable. Absolutely. Uh, you don't go to trial a whole lot. And I think Chewy touched on that a little bit. Yeah. We we're talking about that, that it's, you know, it's rare it's, to find a seasoned trial. Right. Lawyer. Well, I think it's hard because of a, a few factors. So trial rarely happens because judges really encourage people to mediate, try to settle out because right. Uh, trial is a very long, drawn out process. Wow, Ray's you, putting it all out there. Wait, yeah. wait, what's he saying? Ray, Ray's saying that uh, he hit a parked car and you gave him legal advice. <laughs> yeah, no, that was. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna talk about what happened, but that was uh, that was pretty funny. You well, know, Ray's giving all the evidence out online. Ray, please stop. Please yeah. put another disclaimer. Maybe. Yeah. He was like, please. I was, I was drunk. <laughs> I was also <laughs> under the influence. Yeah, just, just, just completely burning himself. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. don't do that, right? Yeah. Please. <laughs> yeah. All of all of these uh, comments are not our own comments. <laughs> oh all my God. God. <laughs> all right. Aaron's right. just really good. Yeah, I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I, didn't, I, I forgot where I was at. That was just like. <laughs> oh you were yeah, saying no, that when you yeah, first started, yeah, it was tri- COVID. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what? Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll touch. I'll, I'll, I'll go back to the whole trial thing in a bit. But um I was a prosecutor for a little bit, COVID hit. And then I was like, man, I'm not really getting a whole lot of trial experience. So I went to go try uh, general practice in Edinburgh. Okay. Um, so I did anything from divorces. I worked on personal injury cases. I still did a little bit of criminal law, but they didn't focus on that a whole lot. Right. right. Um, so I, the hard part about it was I didn't have a lot of proper education. So people think that, when you become an attorney that there's going to be someone there to like coach you up. Right. Uh, Cause truth be told law school does not teach you anything on how to become a lawyer. You have to, I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. You have to find extracurriculars. That's why I took a job in law school to learn certain things. Right. right. Um, because you, no one teaches you how do you file a petition? 
You know, how do you file an answer? How do you even draft those things? You don't know anything. Do you know, I wanted to say this earlier that like, man, that could have, that was probably like the best thing your parents did is like, you know, get you into some type of mentorship. Absolutely. That's the only way to like learn anything. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like we were talking about like, uh, like jujitsu, like, you know, if I want to learn, I mean, you're a black belt, man. If I, if I ever needed some advice, I'd mm-hmm. go to you. And so, underhooks, underhooks, JB, underhooks. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Mick, he's a really good coach, honestly. Oh, I was yeah. saying the same he thing over and over. More. Yeah, I feel but like, yeah, sense. you'd put me in a pretzel in no time. Yeah, I, I, no. I feel like that. No, no, no. No, no, no but if you were true. fighting somebody, he'd definitely be like, no, like, I'm going to try my best to, like, coach you to, like, do this, do that. And okay, okay. Yeah, just yeah, simple yeah. position stuff. On yeah, that. yeah. Okay, yeah. But yeah. to make you, like, okay, like, makes you think like okay i'm gonna do this do that like you know whatever you, you were talking about <laughs> you, <No>. you were talking <laughs> well yeah i know so on the whole mentorship thing man uh funny enough i i had this moment because like i said earlier i i had a mentor um when i was like 18 19 that made me really fall in love with the idea of becoming an attorney i had an intern this past summer and he was thinking about going to law school and i said okay well you know what come with me for a couple of days and so I was kind of doing the same thing that my mentor did. Right. I brought him and I had like 10, 12 hearings that day. And it was like, I would go into one courtroom, talk to people, you know, get deals done or, you know, move my court dates, get discovery, uh, whatever the case may be. And then, you know, I, I got in the truck with him and then he was like, man, that was awesome. How do you do that? And then I kind of realized it came full circle, right? <laughs> like now I'm that person who, you know, will offer my mentorship to and, and, like going back to the San Benito thing, I mean, now I really want to, you know, if there's any kids out there that want to know more about becoming an attorney or, um, you know, just maybe they want to do it. I, I want to offer anything I possibly can. Oh, you yeah. know, if, if, nice. You know, if, if I can get more people to, even if it's not a lawyer, right? Like if you want to be a doctor, uh, veterinarian, I always encourage people to go out and seek those mentorships for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Th- yeah. Th- that's what he says for kids that he knows that aren't going to be a lawyer. Like, yeah, if you want to be a, do- uh, you know, a vet, oh <laughs> there's so much, so much opportunity out there. Yeah. In construction dude, but no, like, and- I, I love this dude. I love like, if honestly, dude, if I, if a kid comes across me, he's like, and like he's like, oh, I'm gonna be a lawyer. Yeah, I'm be like, I know a guy. Yeah, I'll yeah, just no, say, put I, him there. Abso- absolutely. <laughs> I know a guy. Yeah, dude. no, I'd be more than happy to, man. Because sometimes it takes that to make kids realize. Because like I, uh, you know, it, it's hard growing up trying to figure out what you want to do with the rest of your life. Because yeah. I feel like society places such huge pressure on us very young to make such a huge life decision. Now, some people. Like they have the outside thinking of being like, well, I don't really have to fit this life calendar. Yeah. But a, a lot of us do feel that pressure of like, well, I'm this age and I don't have, you know, this going on in my life and whatever the case may be. So you just got to be exposed to it. Like, yeah, exactly. So you have to, you know, just, yeah, be exposed to it. I think if, you know, more people just, you know, take that, you know, humble round to say, hey, I'm, I'm so and so, you know, I'd love to learn more about what you do. Yeah, of course. You know, like maybe you can come by sometime. I can talk to you about what I do. You know, maybe I, you can shadow me for a little bit. Right. Maybe it takes that, so that way you're not kind of sitting around. So I always you they know, get a taste of exactly. they get a taste of the. So yeah, I, the I tell people all the time, like if you're stuck trying to figure out what you want to do with yourself, be proactive. You yeah. know, look, yeah. if, if you have an idea, go yeah. go seek a mentorship. Exactly. You know, yeah. You know, it's so t- like especially with you know young. Like the younger, you know, if you're that young, like I feel like when when I was when I, I was a kid, old and that's why I was asking, yeah. did you have very encouraging parents? Because when I was a kid, I could ask them anything, and they would they would uh, drop it immediately, shoot you down. No, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, w- I was gonna say, yeah, no, I I attribute a lot of my you know uh, achievements to my parents. Um, I had I couldn't ask for better parents, man. I mean, if there was anything I wanted to do. They were a hundred percent behind me. Yeah. Um, what do you mean by that? Like opposed to my parents? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> no, like no comparison. My here. father was a good man. Yeah. <laughs> he was just resentful. That's yeah. all. No man, but I mean, <laughs> my uh, my parents were always just you know uh, behind me one hundred percent. If I yeah. wanted to do something, and so you know, um, when my father heard I, I wanted to, uh, I was thinking about being an attorney. They were just uh, okay. Well, you know what. Here, here's this guy, but the Theo- fact that they yeah. thought that up and they did, you know, they, they actually, they put you on, that couldn't be, 
like that's the best thing you could do. Put you know yeah. someone on a mentorship, yeah. even like a young young kid. That way they could just see it, get a taste. Yeah. Of it. Well, like even now, man, I like I'm 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 a young attorney, so there's a lot I'm still trying to learn as well. So there are times when I don't know a certain area of law, and I'll see you know an attorney who's been doing something I'm interested in for you know 20 years, and so I have to have that humbleness and just be right. like, hey, you know, uh, I'm Aaron Garza, I'm a young attorney. I hear you do this. I'd love to pick your brain. Can we go have lunch sometime? You know, don't be afraid to go up to people and just ask for some advice. It's yeah. such a huge thing. I mean, in, in any aspect of life, it doesn't have to just be a, uh, you know, a professional thing. It could be anything. The worst thing they'll yeah. say is just no. Is Ray still on the chat or what? Yeah, I, I, no, see, a, I no, see a big old <laughs> grin on your face. So <laughs> No, it's my cousin. She's oh, uh, okay. Cause saying my father was a good man, like in past tense. He's still, yeah. uh, he's still a good man. He's a great man now. How about mm. that? There you go. There you go. Yeah. These are all opinions. <laughs> These oh opinions my are all my God. own. They do not. They, <laughs> I'm good, right? They are I not representative of fact. Okay, so I wish I knew more about law, just in general, dude. Like, law, just in general. But you're telling us that libel is pretty. It it you know there's a difference between defini- defamation and libel, and it really depends who we're talking about. To yeah. how yeah. much we need to prove in court. Yeah, really. yeah, absolutely. So, like I was saying, um, uh, it, one, it has to be an untrue uh, statement, but um, but uh, everything there, everything we say here is fact <laughs> to the best of our oh knowledge. My God. <laughs> to the well, best of our knowledge. Well, I was also going to say that there has to be damages, right? So, for civil suits, it, it's very weird because there <laughs> has to be some sort of actual damages, right? Like, like TVs. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I, I don't know what you all do, but <laughs> who's breaking TVs in here, man? What are you yeah. talking about? We're good, we're good. We don't do nothing. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, so in in my day to day work, I mostly deal with criminal law. So uh, it's a lot of you know drug charges, a lot of uh, driving while intoxicated is a really big one, man. Big oh one. hell yeah, it's a very very big one. Damn. <laughs> I just want to say I don't encourage anyone to drink and drive. Do give not it, drink and drive. Give it up for driving on the road. <laughs> Jeez. Driving on the road while drunk. With the three year old kid oh, in the passenger seat. No, yeah. That's a felony. <laughs> yeah. That's a felony. That's, that's a, a state felony. jail felony. Yeah. Oh my so, god. So driving uh, driving while intoxicated with a child under fifteen is an automatic felony. <laughs> Oh my so, god! Yeah, this guy is telling people to drink and drive. <laughs> no, I'm absolutely no, not. No, oh no, god. no, not at all. Please, if that's what you took out of this, yeah, this, do not, no, do, do not. not. That's not no right, way yeah, to drink. Absolutely not. At least drink when you're parked. Yeah. All right, all right. How, how about this? All right. Uh, look, let's say, let's say I've um, this. I asked the same question to Chewy. Okay, mm. I'm pulled over. Um, I'm slurring my words a little bit. I'm a little like he's doing it on purpose. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm slurring my words a little bit. Um, kind of, uh, you know, uh-huh. I don't know. Yeah, I just whatever. And the cop pulls me over. What's my best course of action from that point? Well, it's kind of hard because, like, we were talking, you know, like off the live. Uh, it it's it's really weird. Um, so my first. Uh, piece of advice would be to talk as little as possible. Okay. Uh, because one, sir, thing, have you been drinking tonight? Yeah. Like, and the thing is, it's your right to not a- answer those questions, right? Yeah. So, I think there's a way to uh, enforce your rights, you know, with still remaining respectful. Yeah. And right. so, I think you need to strike that balance in those kinds of situations, because on every police report I've ever seen, when defending clients or even prosecuting, when I was a prosecutor, the first thing that the cop is going to put on the police report was. Slurred speech, bloodshot eyes, you know, uh, they smelled alcohol on their breath. And a lot of those clues can be taken away if you speak as little as possible, right? right. If, if you're not, let's say you don't talk at all. It's like, if I'm not talking, how do you smell the alcohol on my breath? If I'm not talking, how do I have slurred speech? Mm. You know, so it, it, it helps a lot to kind of do damage control when you get to that point. Now, I will also say this. It's true that you don't have to be a point. You can be under a point oh eight and still get arrested for driving while intoxicated as well. How so, about that, man? Yeah. Point oh eight. Screw that. Yeah. We could still be below the limit and uh, and still get in trouble. Well, yeah. So the thing is, there's um, there's um, there's subjective intoxication. So if an officer reasonably believes that you're still under the influence of drugs or alcohol 
they can say, you know what, this person's not good to drive. I'm going to arrest them. And then they can, you know, do your blood work, see if there was anything in your blood at the time, because it's not always alcohol, right? You can be on other things and still be intoxicated as well. All right. right. So I'm going to tell them, okay. Um, okay. Sir, have you been, have you been drinking tonight? Respectfully, I assert my, or how do you say it? I, uh, I exercise my fifth amendment, right? Yeah. Just be like, no, I, I just like to remain silent, but my, I think, uh, one thing people don't know the most is whenever an officer says, okay, can you step out of the car? I want you to do some tests. Uh, and they have, I'm pretty sure you've seen these. That was going to be my next question. Yeah. They, they do something where they, they take the pen out and they, they move back and forth to test your, it's called the horizontal gaze nystagmus test. So it's just to test if your eyes are are twitching, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so if your eyes are like kind of twitchy, it's more of a sign that you're intoxicated. Then they make you do uh, the walk and turn, the heel to toe. Everyone kind of knows that one. And then they make you stand on one leg. They, they, they tell you like, okay, put your legs together, your hands together, uh, put your foot up six inches and count till I tell you to stop. Those tests are not mandatory. So they're not legally mandatory at all. You can respectfully decline. Now, the thing is, do I say that I respect? Yeah. You, decline. you always respectfully decline. You don't want to be like, no, I don't want to do that. You don't want to get to a point where you're rude to the office. Can't right? just be like, shut up, stupid. Yeah, no, you definitely, but, you definitely what, don't. But, what's but that's the, my right. Other, that's exactly. free speech. Yeah, if, if we have the right, what's the downside well, of it, it, it's telling them to this. shut up so, and calling them well, stupid? Well, no, it's, it's, it's because let's say we go to a trial, right? Yeah. Um, And I have to put the video <laughs> on. I, why, why can't I just, just be really mean to police officers? Let, well, well, it's because then I have to represent the guy who is mean to police officers. No, it, it, it's, it's for your own sake because yeah. let's say we go to a jury trial, right? right? Whatever the case may be, if I feel that there's not strong enough evidence to find you guilty beyond reasonable doubt, right? nonetheless, we're going to have to play the video in front of the jury. And right? it's going to look and really so, embarrassing. So, I mean, if you're a juror and, you know, let's say there's a chance of you getting found not guilty who are they gonna find you know what's more of a chance the guy who's like you know what officer you know my attorney friend always told me to not do these so i was i i understand but i respectfully decline or if you're like no you're an idiot i I don't want to do this yeah like oh fuck off i don't want i wanted you to do this i don't want to do this it's it's not gonna look good so yeah (laughs) Yeah, that's 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 the guy I'd support. Honestly, though, because I, I know Mickey, like... Yeah, no, it looks bad. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Mickey was going to bring up his whole, like... No, it wasn't. The incident. No, it wasn't. No, but no, But honestly, no, no. like, it's I, a, I think when, I, if we're talking about the same incident, I, I think we've already discussed that. Are we talking yeah. about the same one? Yeah, the, 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 the noise the, complaint. The fail to ID. Okay, well... We, yeah. No, no, no. Well, his... Because uh, the officer came up to his... To the garage door, uh-huh. yeah. right? Well, I don't think that matters, right? Like, no, he never he went. He threatened to arrest you if well, you didn't step outside, but technically, you were inside your home. Well, so the thing is, there's still a violation of a law or an ordinance at that point, right? Because yeah. right. so the thing is, people, which it, I admitted, and, and so <laughs> the big thing is, and I know you had said this that this is oh well, this is a secondary offense. The thing is, that's actually not uh, completely true. So there are people who get arrested just on failure to ID. Wow. Because all the officer has to do is articulate that he suspects you of, he or she suspects you of a crime. Right. Right. And if they say, well, I, I can articulate and I have you know, a reasonable suspicion or I have probable cause um, to think that you may have committed this crime at that point, uh, they're detaining you and then they have to provide certain identification. Yeah, identification. So in your scenario, it was like, they cited the ordinance and then it's like, well, can I see some ID? And so I get your point of being like, well, Hey, I'm in my home, but like, nonetheless, it was, JB was the only one saying that. I, I just said, that's why I don't want to, Oh wait, hold on. I'm, I just well, said, I, mean, I just said, I like, I'd rather not go out there. I'm in my home right now. I exactly. don't want to go. Yeah. Like, which, which but is, that's the only reason why I brought up my home. Yeah. I wasn't trying to make a legal stand. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like and so, well, JB is the one who brought that yeah. up. Or I feel like it should yeah. be a legal stand. To your point though, I will say <laughs> after watching the video, I think the officer could have done a better job with the de-escalation of it. Right. Um, and it, the thing is, it's so hard because obviously I always respect police officers. Yeah. Um, you know, I understand their job is extremely hard um, and not a lot of people have the guts to do what they do. Right. Um, and so, you know, I always thank them for protecting our community. But the thing is, is like they 
<laughs> what was that one for? I'm, agree- I'm agreeing with you. Okay, okay, yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's always you know, it's it's always it's a sarcastic. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> like li- just it was like a tad, like a smudge. But no, um, no, no, no. no but uh, like he hates cops. Yeah. <laughs> What the hell's your problem? What did, this, what did this turn into? I absolutely do not. What yeah. the hell's your problem, so, Jimmy? All right, go ahead. I'm yeah, sorry. I mean, I wish we lived in a world where cops had a little bit more or used a little bit more discretion right. when it comes to pulling people over. Because let's say they see someone who might be a little too you know, uh, drunk or maybe they drank a little bit too much. I'd love to live in a world where police officers, all the, not all the time, but can make a judgment call at that point and be like this, you know what this guy has, or this girl has a clean record. Um, they're, they're not super drunk. They're not, you know, sauced out of their mind. It, let, let me let them call someone so that someone can drive them home. I don't want to ruin their night. Yeah. I don't want to ruin just yeah. to keep know. it safe. Yeah, or even, just, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Or, uh, possession of marijuana cases, you know, if there's, you know, uh, like 18 year old, 19 year old kid, you know, going to college destroy or, you know, has life. a job and it's like, you know what? It's just a little weed. Like, you know what? I'm just going to throw it away and just say, I'm going to, I'm going to remember your name. So next time, if I catch you doing this, then I'm really going to, but yeah. at that point, it's like, I, I'm going to, I'm going to give you that chance. Yeah. Right. And, but those opportunities are so scarce. You're talking about yeah. rare cops. Though. Yeah. Like yeah. No, absolutely. And I've seen it before. Like I, I even at, when I was at the DA's office, there were times where I'd be watching videos and the cop would give the guy or the girl a chance to. You know, look, I want I want you to, to call someone and then other things happen. They end up getting arrested. Right. I think it's happened to me twice. Yeah. Where and, I've ran into like yeah. a good cop that was like, hey, I'm going to like you either walk or do or call yeah. somebody. And it's like, you know what? All right. I'm not going to argue with you. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Gonna comply. And that was my thing is that like, look, this cop came here knowing that he wasn't going to arrest me. He wasn't right. going to f- find me. He was just enforcing. He was going to come here and he was going to say. Um, hey, could you guys uh, keep it, it down, down or could you guys turn it off? Yeah. And at absolutely. that point, he knew, you know, I was going to turn it off. No big Until deal. Until you started right? asking questions. But that's why. <laughs> what happens is that if you would have said, look, I'm just, I'm here not to, um, uh, like he knew he wasn't, I wasn't going to be in trouble. Okay. So he didn't need to like. Yeah. By the end of it. He didn't need to get my ID. So, uh, so literally the only time that, um, um. Uh, like it, he would have needed my ID if I was, if he, if I, I was, if he was going to, you know, um, um, detain you that? or I don't know. I don't know how to say like, give me a fine or, you know, yeah. give me a ticket. Yeah. But that's why he didn't need it, but he just wanted to No, I don't escalate situation, escalate situation. I've seen well, cause you Mickey, son of a Mickey right. wants to get into like those First Amendment audits of oh, like, I, you're one I want, of those I want, guys. I want JB. No, 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 no. JB's getting it wrong. JB's getting it wrong. No, 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 no. JB's getting it wrong. I want JB to <laughs> get into First me. Amendment. You want him to be the guinea pig, right? So <laughs> yeah, exactly. To him, like, exactly. exactly. So you can just film it all. No, and you know what? That's why I was doing it. I, I was. Um, <laughs> that's why, it, like, it. He, he could have, you know, respected. Oh, yeah. My private, absolutely, but he, but he didn't, and so that's okay. That's fine, and he escalated it. All right, do you know what? You were saying that you watched the video, and you were saying, and you were thinking like, uh, you know, he could have handled it better. Absolutely. Yeah. Recently, when we just watched it, I thought like I had the opposite reaction, and I was thinking like, do you know what? I kind of thought he escalated it a lot more quickly. Yeah, he, he did a pretty good job. <laughs> well, I, I think the thing is like it doesn't. I I don't think he had to be so. You know, uh, give me your ID, you know what, yeah. whatever. Because yeah. the thing is, even if you're like, you know what, I just don't want to answer questions. I don't want to look, that's fine. I mean, you can obviously see you're just out, uh, out there, you know, playing your instruments. Yeah. Yeah. You're not hurting anybody. You're not doing any harm. It's like, look, guys, whatever. Just keep it down. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get in my cruiser. Like, look, bro, I, I don't want to come back out here. Just please keep it down. If I have to come out here again, then right. there might have to be an issue. It's like, OK, great. I mean, then he can go on to, you know, uh, focusing on other things rather than, you know, noise complaints. Right. right. So um, he could have definitely just been like, look, man, I, I don't want to get into it. Just please keep it down. Uh, I don't want to come back here again, man. I'm just going to leave you with that. Just I don't want to get any more calls. Great. Right. That's it, what it could have been over like that. Yeah. And like the best thing to do when somebody says, I don't want to escalate things isn't to say it's already escalated. Like you're not supposed to do oh, that no, as a cop. Yeah, yeah. You can't just say it's already escalated. We're going to keep escalating nah, these things. But that's, that's kind of like how I was raised though. Like I was always raised to like 
if, a, if an officer approaches you, whatever, you answer his questions respectfully, you know, like, because there's nothing really that I have to hide. So yeah. here's, you know? here's, here's, here's my thing, JB. You're wrong. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. No, but, but, you know, but you're, no, you're no, not wrong. Either, hold, hold on. Here, here's my thing. What, what, um, um, I'm just trying to exercise it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. maybe, hey, maybe if, so you mm. could think maybe some people do want privacy. You know what mm. I mean? Maybe it's just, okay. So right now he can, you know, get after me, tell me all these things, whatever. It's good content. Okay. Uh, but me? maybe the next time somebody says it, you know, he'll be, he'll be less quicker to like escalate it and realizing like, Hey, you know, maybe this is just a normal dude, not somebody trying to start stuff. Yeah. Well, I also think, you know, it, I guess this is a lawyer in me, right? Cause I'm, I've always been For sure. trained to see, you know, both sides of the, the, the situation. And so the thing is we have to understand with the officers, regardless of how people look, I mean, they, they don't know what to expect whenever they, they come up on a scene. They don't, sure. they don't know what they're getting into. So I think in scenarios where if you know, I, I'm just here, you know, no problem, man. You know what I mean? Because there have been times like I've gotten pulled over for like, let's say uh, if I was speeding or whatever. Right. right. It's like, hey, no problem, man. How are you doing, by the way? How's, how's your day going? Here's my yeah. ID. You know, here's my insurance, my my registration, whatever. And they're just like, you know what, man? Like, yeah, well, I'll just give you a warning. Because it it's like I, I get it. You know, they, they probably I don't know what that cop has been through. I don't know if they had a really stressful day. God knows that they've seen something violent yeah. during their shift. And so you have to understand that these yeah, that's guys. That's pretty meta. No, nothing's going on here. With the, I mean, you, you never, never know. know. You never know. You never know, really. Yeah. Really. What do you mean? I'm here. There's. I couldn't know anymore. You're here. <laughs> you're here, safe in your house. They're the ones out there, like answering the call in the like, streets. Yeah. In the streets. <laughs> yeah. The streets of pre-meta. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I, yeah, I, I agree. 100%. Yeah. Look, I have nothing to get cops. I respect cops. I think, yeah. yeah, that, um, yeah, it's a, it's a, you know difficult job yeah and uh, so um it, it's so funny because there, there's always a stigma that <laughs> cops hate lawyers yeah. but i i don't really believe so man i mean i have good friends who are on the police force i just i look at it as this if i ever have to subpoena an officer to show up for trial i am the guy who polices the police if that makes any sense so yeah 100 percent. i like if, if on a dwi stop right if i if i'm in a jury trial and i put a cop on the stand I'm going to critique the shit out of everything that For they sure. did. I'm going to be like, well, how come you made them do the, the, the pen right in front of your, your flashing lights? Why didn't you turn off your lights? You don't think that might've affected uh, their vision at all. Or, you know, one thing I'll ask them too is what are the clues? Cause they have this little paper, right? right? Whenever they, they do these tests that they check off. Okay. They have these clues. That's, that's the term that they use. And so where I get a lot of cops is I ask them, uh, you know, off the top of your head, can you tell me all the clues for the uh, HGN test? And then they're like, oh, well, I, I, so it's like, oh, well, so you were just winging it. You didn't know what you were looking for during mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. Or wh what about the, the walk and turn? What about uh, the stand on one foot? Do you mm -hmm. know those clues off the top of your head? And so it's it's good because I think it's always proper for even cops to have these learning experiences so that way they can even be more knowledgeable, right? Yeah. They can do things by the book even more. And even so to the point where... Yeah, then we'll be really screwed, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so, more, no, it's educated like, cops are... It's yeah. more like who watches the Watchmen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, no, so the 100%. thing is like, like people always say, well, oh, like, you know, cops, you know, they don't have anyone to, you know, show them. But th that's our job, right? Yep. So if they do something wrong, it's up to us to... Correct that. To correct yep. that, right? And, and so... Uh, and it's so weird because whenever you're in trial, it's like you have to let them know, like, look, this is just my job. You know, right. I don't know you outside of this. So I just want to let you know nothing is personal because sometimes They'll take it, it. we, can, we yeah. can sound like assholes, yeah. man. Like we can really sound like assholes. And so yeah. um, we just have to let them know, look, this is just my job. I, I don't I don't know you. I don't hate you. I'm just trying to defend my client here. Right. But the good thing about that is in there was even a time where. Uh, when I was a, a first year attorney in at the DA's office, they had some uh, Harlingen Police Department and some state troopers, uh, young state troopers um, would come and they would give us like a, a fake uh, fact scenario. And we would uh, practice cross examining them because um, that would not only give us experience on cross and ex uh, examining police officers, but then it would let them yeah. know how it feels to be on the stand, because regardless of, you know, uh, how you feel as, as a police officer, 
being on the stand, no matter who you are, is an extremely scary experience. Yeah. Nerve wracking. Everything you say Once is you put being your put hand on, on the yeah. fucking thing. And everything you say is. No, wait, you mean the Bible, JB? The, <laughs> the, the fucking thing, thing really? The, the, the fucking thing? My bad. My bad. My bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. Yeah. Sorry. But yeah, and uh, you know, you're talking about the criteria for uh, 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 for for a cop to you know charge someone with or you know arrest somebody for a DUI. Um, and you know, I had a friend that uh, he got in he got in trouble uh, in trouble for uh, he was asleep he fell asleep in a in a car uh-huh. and he was uh, he was he was drunk. And so he just, you know, he screwed it up. He had, you know, he admitted to whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I was saying that would probably help him out even more, right? right? Well, it's... If they just woke up, wouldn't that, like, affect their eyes and their coordination and all that stuff? Yeah, to an extent. So the only thing, too, and, and I'm kind of glad I get to, you know, talk on this a little bit more is uh, you have to be technically operating a motor vehicle, the only thing is that the law is very liberal on how they uh, interpret operating. So the, Ugh, these, I hate liberals. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> so it, it's it's something where um, they're just doing their job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just kidding. There, there's a standard where uh, a Texas law in, in in the cases has said it has to be something more than mere preparation. Has to be mere, more than mere preparation to operate the motor vehicle. So you have people. Who, if they're in a parking lot, like just left a bar and they're just like sauce and they're just passed out, yeah. right? And like the engine's on, uh, like the cop can just be like, obviously you were preparing to drive this vehicle. I mean, right. yeah. you're, you're, the engine's on, you're in the driver's seat, you just left a bar. Or, you know, there are other scenarios where it's like, um, I, I can't remember the name of the case, but there was one where a guy jumped in the passenger seat and then fell asleep at an intersection and then he was like, well, I wasn't the one driving. And it was like, well, like no one teleported you here. Like, how did you get here? He didn't say there was another driver. Right. Yeah. right? And so with the totality of circumstances. Oh, that's a badass excuse. Yeah. Cops can cops can kind of be like, well, I mean, obviously you were operating this motor vehicle, even if you're not driving it. Like, it's not something where, OK, I put in drive. Now I'm how operating did this it. vehicle get here. Yeah, you absolutely. You could say, like, I was with the dude and and uh, he ran and now he's gone. <laughs> I fell asleep. And now he's I guess yeah, I was asleep on the car. Right. I guess yeah. if we're too soft, I think I, think I was assaulted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, if, I, if anything, I need to file a report. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm the victim here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> help me. <laughs> I'm a victim. <laughs> Jesus. He touched me. Oh, no. <laughs> this is a guy we're talking about, okay? It's it's funny when it's a guy, okay? It's, uh, it's horrific. <laughs> Jesus. What, what is that? Oh, what, just throwing that out off. very, oh, very no, just hot sorry. takes. No, not that I really feel that it is funny, but I mean, like... Tell me how you really feel, Mickey. I'm saying it's less of a sensitive <laughs> subject when... Oh, oh, my God. Well, I just mean guy on guy. It doesn't happen God. that often. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Whatever. Well, there you go. That's funny though. Like, I guess like yeah, like if you're too sauced, just get in the back seat and crash out because it's like don't even turn on the car. Well, I, the car I don't know. I would on. even if I if I wasn't trying to go anywhere, I'd still turn on the car. It's hot. Nah. No, because like turning on the car is yeah. like a huge factor just in roll, just, operating. Just, the just roll down vehicle. the windows and then turn it right off. That's not good it. enough, man. It's hot. Yeah, it's no, hot but, in the valley. But you know, know drive while intoxicated is a very. In, I mean. As much as I don't like to admit it, a lot of people do it. You know, yeah, whether yeah. they get caught or not, you you have people on the weekends. Yeah, know. they but do it all the time. It's yeah. so weird to me because it's it, and and this is why DWIs are very interesting, right? Because it's legal to go out and have a drink. There's nothing wrong with that. It's right. driving like driving while drinking. Because uh, like I remember one time I got a case actually thrown out because an officer misstated the law. Yeah, where my client had uh, admitted to drinking just just one Bud Light, and then um, their significant other called them and said, "Well, I'm too drunk." Like, so they stopped drinking. They're like, "Okay, let me go pick him up." So then they got pulled over, and um, the officer was like, "Well, you just admitted to drinking, and you were behind the wheel, so I'm gonna arrest you." Right? That that's not enough evidence, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like. The moment I take a sip of like wine or take a sip of, you know, proper 12, am I automatically unfit to drive now? Yeah. There has to be a point where it's like I can drink and drive. You just cannot drive intoxicated. Yeah. Right. And so that level of intoxication is where things get kind of that's the like fuzzy that, that's that, that gray area. area. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, there are also some cases where, um, you know, your guy was just, I mean, gone. Plastic. Yeah, just absolutely <laughs> hammered out of his mind. And so yeah. um, I, I think this was another thing Chewie touched on was 
um, it's always and, and, and trials happen so rarely because um, you have to look out for your client's best interest. Right. At, 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 that should be your first because a lot of lawyers go with that advertising of, well, I'm going to fight every step of the way I'm going to. But <laughs> the thing is, is like <laughs> they just I, accept deals. Yeah, I yeah. would I would much rather put you in a position where I know I am doing what's in your best interest. Cause I right. mean, I've had clients where they may have wanted to fight it, but uh, I, what I do is if they really want to go to a trial, I'll bring them to my office and then I'll question them as if I'm the prosecutor. Right. Uh, because I was one. And so I know what these guys are going to look for. And I tell them, honestly, man, if I put you in front of a jury, it, it's not going to look good because right. you, there's a lot of holes in your story and I'm not going to tell you to lie. I'm not going to tell you, uh, I'm not going to coach you up to say something yeah. that's not true. So it's like, I need to make sure you're in a position where I give you the best outcome. I don't want to see you in jail. I don't, right. you know, and even then trial is such a, um, a weird thing because you can only pick from a certain amount of jurors, right? Let's say I have a case where um, the victim was a, a military person, right? Like there was an assault on a military person. I'm trying to defend the guy who allegedly assaulted the, the military person. And then I end for some reason that day, I get a lot of people in the prospective jury that were military, right? You, you really have to just work with what you have. And so when you're on voir dire and you're trying to find a jury that you feel would be best for your case, it, it's it's really like gambling a lot of time. You you have to hit or miss. Yeah, exactly. And so voir dire is a very uh, thorough process. But even then, it's like sometimes you just you get a pool of jurors that you know, aren't gonna you know really sympathize with your case. Right. You know, now that we're on we're on this subject, uh, that is a good question. Uh, can we refuse a breathalyzer? Yeah, you can always refuse a breathalyzer. The only thing is that they're gonna get a blood warrant, right? Yeah. Um, that for sure they'll get that, that warrant yeah. by the time you're at the, yeah. So the thing is, it, it's always good because, and that's one of my biggest, uh, pieces of advice as well. Um, because for a few reasons, uh, an officer will tell you, well, if you don't blow and you make me go get a, a blood warrant, I'm going to suspend your license. And there's a couple points to that. One, um, your life, if you blow over 0.08, your license is getting suspended regardless. Yeah. And right. the other thing is that. Just because they say your license is going to get suspended does not mean it's actually going to get suspended. Yeah. So yeah. when you hire an attorney, oh man, I'm, I, I'm, I'm so glad I came on here. There's a lot of things Dude. I feel like people need to know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Especially like me. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so um, there's a form that they give you after you've been arrested. And so most people do not read it, but it says you have 15 days uh, from the date of the arrest to file for what's called an administrative license revocation hearing. Okay. And so that's where you can um, have a hearing with the DPS to say that there was not enough probable cause to arrest you, whatever the case may be. If we win that case, you get your license back automatically. Okay. Even if you don't, we can do what's called an occupational driver's license, where if you need to take care of your kids, if you have a job that you need work. to go work, yeah, I can file with the Justice of the Peace Court. Like if I if I had a case here in San Benito, I would file a um, you know, uh, an ODL application with Chewy, you know, I have to make sure that they have certain things like uh, SR 22 insurance, a, a driver's record from the DPS um, and a letter from their work stating their hours. Uh, they can still, you know, go and uh, go about their Are business. Are they tagged the whole time? So you can only drive 12 hours out of the day on an ODL. So they, they give you a certain time frame. So that's, that's kind of the only thing. Is that a subjective measure or is it like a strict? That's kind of no, fair. No, it's, it's, they kind of work with your schedule, right? So That's the thing good. is I can put down on the application that let's say you work from 4 a.m. to, you know, noon or 4 a.m. to 3. If, if it fits within those 12 hours, I can give you that time frame to go drive. Um, but going back to the other point of why it's always good to refuse the, um, the breathalyzer is when you, oh, sorry, my mouth is super dry. No, yeah, but, yeah, because that was something that I, um, that I heard that it, okay, it's always good to refuse the the breathalyzer, yeah. and so if they do the blood thing, okay, you'll probably you know lose your license, but the lawyer can get it back. Yeah, like, absolutely, you know. and not only that, man, um, but you have to prove that that person was intoxicated, that intoxicated at the point of them operating the motor vehicle. Sometimes it takes uh, officers a lot longer 
to get that blood warrant rather than just have the breath, right. uh, you know, to, to blow right there. Um, so all and, that time is money. Well, or so, like, you know, yeah, that's- yeah, exactly. So what happens is your BAC is on the rise. Like people think once I stop drinking, like my BAC is going to go down. That's not true. What happens is at least up to, I think, uh, and you can't quote me on this, but it's like three or four hours after you finish yeah. drinking, your BAC is still going up. Yeah. And let's say you're at a point where two hours or three hours after they pull you over, you're at a 0.08. It's like, well, my BAC was going up. You have to prove I was 0.08 or you have to prove I was intoxicated at the, at at the, the point time. of driving. Yeah. Oh, oh man, that's perfect. Yeah. So like the the more time, the Dude, the, the better. The hole just gets deeper and deeper. Uh, and deeper. Yeah, no, and it, it. you know that that's why it's it's very important to have legal representation, man. Because, yeah. um, and even then, I, I think in my day to day work, you have to wear a lot of hats. So, um, I have to be the person who provides good legal service. Yeah. Um, but I also have to be able to guide someone through this process. And on and and I think most important is. These are situations where I, I don't see people who are in the best mood right. uh, every day. Uh, if right. I have, um, you know, criminal clients, these people are, are facing going to jail. I or if I deal with divorce clients, they might lose their home. They might. Dude, you're also like a psychologist. Yeah, absolutely. Because you have to be able to, you know, comfort them. You have to be able to make sure that they are. Um, you know, trusting in your services. Yeah. And so, um, but you know, it, I love it, man. I absolutely love it. I don't know what I'm going to get into every day. Every day I wake up and it's like, what problem am I, am I going to have to solve today? Something you know? new. Yeah, absolutely. And so it, it's one of those jobs where I, I think an old attorney told me this why that's why they call it the practice of law yeah. because it, it's, it's so much that you're never going to yeah. master it. Anyway, yeah. You know, same reason why I love golf. It's like, it's one of those sports where you're never so, going to be perfect at it, but you still chase it every day. Yeah, I'm getting yeah. better. Or violin. I've heard violin I'm getting takes people. Violin. <laughs> yeah. It takes people decades to get yeah. like fairly violin. Good violin. Yeah, I heard violin's extremely complicated. Oh, yeah. I could probably pick up the cello. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's so funny because like you look at people doing things and you're like, ah, I could do like. I have this weird delusion. That's my weird ability. Yeah. yeah. I have this I have this weird delusion that I think I would just be awesome at snowboarding. I don't know why. I've never snowboarded. It looks cool. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I look at people and I'm like, I could do that. No problem. Just like give me a board. But I know for a Aaron, fact that we're yeah. going to Colorado. We're yes. going so Yeah. I, I feel like I would break something just trying to do something stupid. <laughs> I think I, I watched too much Johnny Tsunami growing up. I oh, think that was yeah. The, he, he had the <laughs> grandpa picked it up watched, really yeah, quick. We watched that the, like not too we long ago. We watched it like maybe like a couple of months <laughs> That's ago. That's wild, dude. I haven't seen that since I was like six, dude. <laughs> He's yeah. been like researching old Disney Yeah, movies I've been rewatching like, all of them. Dude. Johnny Tsunami came up and so we were like... Do you know what they right? didn't They didn't have on uh, Disney Plus? So I just watched it like on the web was uh, My Date with the President's Daughter. Oh, no, my no. date with the president's daughter. Oh yeah, my I forgot date about with her. Yeah, with uh, with Will Friedle yeah. from Boy Meets World. Yeah, oh, I'm trying yeah. to think of other ones like uh, heavyweights. Heavyweight. Yeah, oh, heavyweights. dude. Yeah, we saw heavyweights. Same thing. Not too. Well, I I see heavyweights all the time. Yeah. I love <laughs> you just movie. you just religiously watch heavyweights. Yeah, dude. Like if anything, I watch the uh, the 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 commentary. The director's commentary. Jeez, uh, <laughs> you get you, you get deep in the bag get, over heavyweights. Yeah, that's an early uh, Judd Apatow film. There's a lot of. Oh yeah. wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Oh, it, it was supposed to be like an R-rated uh, movie, but they really. Brought it down. Yeah. 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 They brought they, down. They the, toned it down. Yeah, they toned it down. Yeah. There you go. I would hope so. Brink yeah. as well. Brink is a staple. I've seen. Oh, Brink is great too. But my favorite of all time, especially with like childhood Disney movies, is Cool Runnings. I wow. love. <laughs> I didn't expect I, that. Yeah, Cool Runnings. I don't know why. Like I grew up just watching Cool Runnings. But yeah. I, I remember my mom told me when I was like a real little kid. That's what the Bob says, right? Yeah. Yeah. The Bob yeah, the the the, 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 Sled team. team. <laughs> right. I just love that movie. But my mom always told me when I was like really little i was like a baby that i would like freak the hell out if she didn't put james and the giant peach on like for some reason i was obsessed uh, with that I movie. Remember, yeah i remember that dude, uh, for some reason that movie i'm afraid that was a good movie. I'm, a, yeah. I'm, a, I'm afraid to watch i just dude it's a I, creepy movie dude. it is it's I, a, it's I, a I only movie I, I i don't remember much of that movie i just remember feeling sad when i was yeah. watching those so i'm having a hard time it, going back to it, it has like a very gothic undertone to it especially yeah. like during yeah. like the cartoon scenes like it's 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 very weird man but yeah i don't know for some reason as a kid i just absolutely loved it yeah so 
Yeah, well, crazy, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, we've been re- re- re-watching all of them. I'm like all over all of them. Free Willy. Hey, and I, and I was going to say, I think that's the reason why you think you could just pick up uh, snowboarding. I think you feel like you're like the Jamaican bobsled team and they went straight to the Olympics. Yeah, they were just like, you know, fuck it. We're just going to we're going to make a bobsled team. Yeah. Once yeah. you like, once, how true is that? Once you break, they just picked it up and went to the Olympics. <laughs> what the hell? You break 90, you break 80. That's when we're going. I can, yeah, yeah. What? Uh, oh, I, th- I thought you, I thought you wanted to no, go like, on tour. No, no, like when you <laughs> when you break ninety or break eighty in golf, that's when we're going snowboarding. Oh, yeah, that's when you're gonna be like. Did I tell yeah. you? I'm go- uh, me and Priscilla are going to Denver uh, in a couple of weeks. Nice. Oh, yeah. No, you didn't I, tell me that. That's why I want to. I, I don't know, but I I, <laughs> I feel so uneducated because I don't really go anywhere. I don't really travel anywhere. Okay. Like to so Den- Denver. Itself. I'm scared to ask. Hey, do you have snow here right now? <laughs> well, I, I will say, be prepared, man. So, yeah. um, actually, with with Richie, Anthony, Matt, yeah. uh, Tommy, we all took a trip to Breckenridge, and it was interesting. So why at, do you say interesting? What's going so, on? So, um. We took a road trip because, like, Richie was, like, terrified of flying, right? And so, <laughs> yeah. Mas puta. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> no, like, like, Rich was, like, I mean, I'm not, like. You had to drive because yeah. someone was scared. Shout out yeah. to Breezy Flight Company. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. So I'm just, I'm just kidding around. I, I'm a nervous flyer, but I'll do it, right? It's, like, what, what, what other choice do I have? Flying it's, is the way to go. Honestly. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's like you get there in a couple hours, you're good. It's just shorter. That's what yeah, feels absolutely. better. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you just save time. Yeah. One yeah, podcast, and you're good. <laughs> yeah. So um, we took a road trip up there, but uh, I never want to drive that far again. Oh, never. how never. many hours know, was it, dude? Um, let me see. So I drove from here to Austin. Right. That was about four and a half, five hours. Um, I, Five hours. yeah. So then, uh, from Austin to, we, we spent the night there. Then we went from Austin to Amarillo, which is about eight hours, eight hours. And then we went from uh, the next 14. day, we went to Amarillo to Denver and we stopped there. That was about eight hours. And then we drove up the mountain to Breckenridge, which is another hour and 20 minutes. That's 25 hours. Damn. It was, it was awful. It was absolutely awful, but yeah. I I think Colorado is probably the most aesthetically pleasing place I've ever been in my entire life. Like, yeah, it just even the air like you just feel healthier just being there. Is it's, it is it snowing year round? No, we went in the summer, so it was it was still cold. Yeah. I will say that. And well, obviously, also we were at Breckenridge. It's like eleven thousand feet above sea level. Okay, so there's still like it's hard to breathe. Yeah, well, it, you know, it's so weird because I I I was kind of scared of that when I went up to Breckenridge. Cause I had never, you know, been in that high altitude of a place, but you, you feel it, but it's not as bad as you would think. It's like, um, like I thought you were just gonna be like, <gasps> like you can't breathe. It's, uh, they sell oxygen tanks oh. at, at the convenience stores. Like you yeah. put your mouth on it. You can, yeah. I don't know if you've seen those, but, um, yeah, on Shark it's, Tank. it's little things where, um, like in the cabin that we got, my room was upstairs. So I walked up the stairs and then you feel like, damn, I'm out of breath already. You know, damn. like you, you feel it. But after uh, like, after day two, you, you, your body gets used to it super quick. Um, but driving up the mountain was one of the scariest experiences of my life. Geez. Because, oh my gosh. Yeah. Because it was raining really bad. Oh and mind God. you, like, cause Denver's about like, like 5,000 above. And so you're going 6,000 feet more above sea level. Samanito natives, uh, Aaron Garza, Richie Chavez die in horrific cars yeah. on yeah, the side I of know. a mountain. Yeah. <laughs> but it was so weird because I was like, I, I had this like... Uh, Aaron literally bought oxygen. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, funny enough, I, I did. I actually did. You made the purchase. Yeah, oh, I did. And it was real expensive for no reason. Oh, my God. They sell God. it at Walmart. You can go buy yeah, oxygen you can go, at Walmart. Yeah, you can go get them at Walmart yeah. now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I, I was like stuck between this place when I was driving up. It was like, I'm so scared because like you look down, there's nothing stopping you from a 2,000 foot drop, just a guardrail. Yeah. Right? Because you're just in between all these huge mountains. But it is so beautiful. I mean, like you're just really captivated I believe by it. the scenery it's like we're it, i think the after the rain was done when we were close to getting there the sun started coming out i was like this place is gorgeous man like this is i was like if, if i could live in any other state besides yeah. texas it would definitely be colorado for sure nice but i yeah. wouldn't doubt you're gonna have like a house here and then you're gonna have a house in denver you should have one in arizona i heard they have like all four, that's home. that's my thing is arizona because i heard they have all four seasons yeah so wherever nice there's golf like, courses 
Yeah, real. golf oh, courses. Yeah. Nice golf course. <laughs> oh, that too. But hey, we're gonna go to Aaron's place in Arizona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, what about the ski lift? What happened? Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> Who told you about that? Don't worry about it, man. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. If we're gonna, if we're gonna, if we're gonna embarrass myself right here on live, but. Um, Breezy. That we, we were gonna, we were gonna. <laughs> is he watching this right now? <laughs> fucking yeah, Richie, so. man. You see, he wanted I to get me. Richie. He got me back because yeah. I said he was scared to fly. <laughs> so, um, we were on the gondolas, right? Because they take you up, yeah. um, even further. Like, we went from like 11,000 to like 14,000. Yeah. And dude, I like, I was scared of that because, like, <laughs> you, like, you're on this Hell little yeah. thing, like, on a wire, right? Yeah. And I'm like freaking out. I'm like, and the worst thing is. If I had someone who was like, ah, it's all good, man. Like, it's all good. It would have been fine. <laughs> These guys stick me in the same gondola as Richie. Yeah. And me and him, like, deal with our our anxiety in completely different ways. Cause he's, he's like, did you feel that? Yeah, yeah. No, because I'm just real like, look, leave me alone. I'm going to chill out, right? Yeah. I'm going to chill. This dude was like, Aaron, like, what if the door opens right now and we, and we fall out? Like, Aaron, like, what, what happens if the wire gets cut right now? What if we all die, Aaron? And I'm over here like, and I remember, like, he was freaking me out so much. I was holding onto the rail so hard, like, my arm went numb. Oh, oh my God. And then all the other guys were in the gondola in front of us. And, like, there's these little stops on each yeah. point yeah. where your gondolas get close. And I just see them laughing their ass off. They're like, dude, this was great. This is a great time. That's awesome. And so, no, nah, it was, it was, it was a fun experience, man. Yeah. I mean, at least I could say I did it. I, I was scared, but yeah, you know, um, definitely, mm -hmm. uh, definitely one of the things I, I don't regret doing. It was very yeah. fun. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> You'll have a blast, nice. Mick. You just go and enjoy yourself. Yeah, yeah, I'm hoping to be healthier by then. I'm not in good health right now. I'm not. You're not in doing good too health, well. dude. You'll be fine by then. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, okay. Look, this is because I'm trying to think of old high school uh, uh, memories. Well, actually, I was gonna. Don't. I was yeah. <laughs> I, I, I I was gonna say one thing I wanted to touch on before anything was uh, I know you told me something about a uh, a car accident issue with with no insurance. Oh no! Yeah, it, was just, it was just like a scenario. Like, oh okay, yeah. yeah no, oh, I'm sorry because okay, okay, I also okay. wanted to make yeah, sure yeah, I, I, I touched some bases of legal jargon, like yeah, with, with yeah. some. I thought it was something that happened with you, but um, so there are scenarios where you you get hit by people who don't have insurance, right? right? And so that sucks. So uh, the immediate, I think, reaction is to say, "Well, I want to sue that person individually," right? Yeah. Right, but. It's really hard because unless it's someone that you know who has like a lot of, a money, lot of money or a lot of assets, something it's it's very hard because right. it, it's like people have this idea of when you get a judgment against someone that oh well the court's just gonna walk out with a big bag of money right that that's not how it works you have to take that from that individual person right right and so um, sometimes they have to garner like any like. You know other things that aren't you know, the homestead exception maybe a car or whatever but it takes a long process and then you have to find those assets so uh in a lot of people's insurance policies for their own they have what's called uninsured underinsured motorist coverage and everyone has them unless you legally sign off to not have them right and so what you do is you go to your own insurance company and say look i got hit by someone who did not have insurance and then you get your treatment, whatever it be like a, a chiropractor or if you have to go get MRIs, if it gets like to the point where you have to have surgery or something, right. um, your insurance should cover you up to a certain amount. Um, and there's uh, underinsured too. Uh, Cause there are situations where if people get hit uh, and like, I, I recently had a case like this uh, a while back Um so they got injured and there's what's called 3060 policies on, you know, normal car insurance policies. So that means it's 30,000 per person, 60,000 per, you know, incident if there's gotcha. multiple people. Gotcha. Um, and my clients had well over $30,000 in damages, like as far as their medical treatment, because they got hit pretty bad. They, they got pretty banged up. And then I have to go to after I get, you know, whatever amount of money, the max amount from uh, the insurance company, their insurance company. I have to now go to my client's insurance company. The only weird thing is, and, and this isn't me, you know, kind of trashing any insurance company or any insurance company in particular. You'd think that if it's your own insurance company that they'd help you out. 
Yeah. Let me tell you, man, dealing mm. with insurance companies is, is like pulling teeth. It's, mm -hmm. it's terrible because they, I mean, there are some that are pretty reasonable, uh, but those are few and far in between that will actually try to give you some sort of reasonable settlement uh, for your client's car accident. Cause they think, Oh, well you're just, you know, these bills are ridiculous or it's like, who are you to say that? You know yeah. what I mean? You don't know what my client has gone through. So I would say there's like one or two insurance companies that will try to work with you. Uh, but the other ones, like they will like deny everything throughout the entire way. You're going to have to file a lawsuit. I mean, they make you go through like a year two year process sure. to actually get your, your, your car accident settlement. And so, um, I, I think, I think one time I had talked about this. I don't know if it was on my TikTok or where it was, but a lot of people will say that, you know, I just want the cheapest car insurance, right? I, I, that's, I think that's one of the worst things you could possibly do. Uh, because even if it's cheap in that time, right? Right. You have to understand at one point you're going to need, um, oh shit, you, you brought that up real quick. Uh, <laughs> but like, what is he doing? Yeah. Just putting it up. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's, that's a good shout right there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If yeah. people want to go follow to follow me. it. Yeah. There you go. All right. Yeah. Let me put it on the screen. Oh, I, well, I don't know which one it was, or even if it was on my TikTok. I know I have a lot of dumb TikToks on there too, but. What do you mean? Yeah, not man? even dude. Like, oh yeah. Not, that's a real deal, dumb. man. Yeah. Oh no. It's cause like I try to balance having like legal stuff on there and then also. Like humorous like, stuff. Like, humorous stuff. stuff. Oh yeah. yeah. Look at you going off on this one. Yeah, no, that one's actually one of my favorite ones. Like, I have my golf swing on there. You would have thought he was, uh, not only is he a lawyer, but he's a world-class actor. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I love that, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, funny enough, that's actually how I started getting a lot of clients when I first started my own uh, law office, man. Nice. It's so, a good, it's a good uh, like, marketing Well, yeah, tool. so um, when, I, when I started using TikTok, it was because um, I, I started my own law office. And like any other business, it's, it's hard in the beginning, right? Yeah. Cause you're kind of out on your own. You only, you know, the only money you make is what you bring in. And so in the beginning, when you don't have people know that you have a law office, you get a lot of appointments from the County or you get cases from word of mouth from family, right. you know, whatever the case may be. And so I was like, I, I don't have, you know, thousands of dollars to spend on Google ads. I don't, you know, have right. a bunch of capital to put a huge billboard out there. I mean, TikTok was free and funny enough, there was no lawyers in Cameron County using TikTok. And so I was like, if I can have an area of social media that no one else is tapping into right now, yeah, that, that, that's perfect for me. Yeah. I have no competition right now. And so I was like, let me make, and so some of them, as you can see, I made uh, one of the first videos up there was a, a video on spring, like, you know, for spring breakers, it ended up getting like 130,000 views. And so, wow. yeah. And so uh, I don't know if you wanted to watch it or not, but yeah. No, we're gonna watch the whole thing. Oh, it's two minutes. <laughs> it's yeah. two minutes long. Oh wow. Yeah. Put it on. Should we? Is yeah, it okay. put it on. A lot of people from break. Texas or out of Texas around the country are gonna be coming to the Rio Grande Valley for spring break, more specifically South Padre Island. Now, if you're seeing this TikTok and you're coming down for spring break, I want you all to know a few things from a local attorney. If you've been pulled over and the officer suspects you of driving while intoxicated, they may ask you to step out of the vehicle and perform some tests. I would say, don't do the standard field sobriety test. One thing people don't realize is these tests are not mandatory. You can always respectfully decline. Yep. The fact of the matter is, if an officer is asking you to get out of the vehicle, then they more than likely feel that they have enough evidence to arrest you for driving while intoxicated already. At that point, you're just giving them more evidence. And on top of that, always refuse to give a breast sample and always make them get a warrant for your blood. So at this point, an officer may threaten that if you don't comply, that your license is going to get suspended. Um, couple points to that. One, if you blow over a .08, your license is going to get suspended regardless. Yep. Two, is this like a Bugs Bunny voice or what? Yeah. Oh, your license is going to get suspended does not familiar. mean it's actually going to get suspended. That's why you hire an attorney. We can fight to get your license back. In that worst case scenario, we can get you an occupational driver's license, which allows you to drive during your term of suspension. There's always ways to work around it. Now, the next one has to do with marijuana. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. A lot of people come down here, drink, consume drugs. Um, I see a trend in people using THC cartridges down here. Now, a lot of people say that it's a lot easier to use, more discreet, um, and that it's more convenient. Well, That's I'll tell you what's not legal. convenient. The fact that if you're pulled over and you're caught with a THC cartridge, that is a felony, a state jail felony. Yes, you heard me right. 
Now compare that with flower marijuana or marijuana in its original state. If you're caught with under two ounces in the state of Texas, that is a Class B misdemeanor. That's only one degree above a speeding ticket. It's going to be much easier for me to work something out with the DA's office, and you're not going to risk getting a felony conviction on your record for the rest of your life. Yeah. So, once again, I'm not going to condone drug usage, but if I had to choose, I would say flower is the best option. Also, college Amen. kids, don't call your mommy if you get arrested. <laughs> call me. As always, this is just general legal information and not specific advice for your case. If you've been arrested or if you've been involved in a motor vehicle accident, call me at 956-626-2306. Also, Lil Wayne, oh, if oh. you get arrested and see this, please call me. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> now, with spring break upon us, ah, I do understand that, that a lot of people from tech... Yeah. No ceilings did you changed all, my life. Did you get a lot of calls that day? <laughs> yeah, no, and, and I, I ended up getting a lot of business from that. And so I think it's kind of weird because like I am a professional, right? Like I, I know I came in like a hoodie and basketball shorts. I like to dress homeless on my, my time off. You I'm need not some wearing shirts. A suit. Yeah. Like Aaron Garza. Yeah, no, I, I definitely need a... <laughs> Attorney himself, <laughs> yeah, and so oh, for other people, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I'd wear, I'd I thought even like you wear a shirt of yeah. yourself. No, like I'd wear a shirt, like you know, with yeah. his name on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah go for it. It, it, it. It's so weird, man, because I am a professional, right? Like as much as I like to joke around, like I, I do have a very serious job, and uh, you know, I have to take everything I do in court or out of court very seriously right. with my clients, but. I love the idea of TikTok because I can not only show my my personality side, but I can give good legal information out there. And it is kind of weird because uh, when you start using TikTok, I, I I'm not gonna you know say like oh my god I get criticized so much, but I do get mocked a little at at the courthouse because like I'm I'm making TikToks and stuff. But I will say this: anyone who had a good idea, like it always came with criticism, right? right? It's like. And I'm not going to say like I'm going to be this super huge successful person, but everyone is always, you know, questioning what you're doing until you actually become successful in what you right. do. Right. Uh, I don't know if you know the saying, uh, the people that are asking you why you're doing it will ask you how you did it. Exactly. If, they, if that makes any sense. And so, yeah. Because once uh, they stop asking, that's when you're it's like, like, yeah, because like, oh, like I always get stuff like, oh, like, hey, chill out. Aaron's going to make a TikTok about us, like, or something like that. But it's like, it's all good. I mean, I I like it because once again, I don't see any other Cameron County attorneys trying to utilize TikTok, and it, that's you know an area where I can try to capitalize on yep. on business. I I think that's that's great for me, you know, and um, I think that social media is becoming a lot more prevalent in marketing, um, especially for attorneys. I don't know if you all are familiar with uh, Leah Wise, um. Sounds, from, sounds familiar. Yeah, sounds familiar. Yeah, Leah yeah. Wise. So, um, wait, I, from where again? What'd you say? Well, she's originally from Primera, right? Yeah. But like, you're, you'll probably see her billboards everywhere. Like, okay. she's like, she's a huge attorney down here. I think she's opening up offices all over the state. Okay. Right? But um, she's she was probably like the biggest pioneer of social media marketing because she made it big off social media marketing and she did a great job of it. And so, she's one of the people that you look to to be like, you know what, like. If she could do something, I can do it too. And not only right. the fact that she kind of encouraged and, and she went through a whole lot of criticism when she started, right? Because she's putting herself out there on, on yeah. Instagram or wherever, Facebook. Um, and now it's more um, acceptable for lawyers to kind of be out there on social media. And not only that, but I think she also encouraged a lot of female attorneys, especially yeah. you know, Latina attorneys, um, you know, to, to get to where they are. And that's a huge thing. Like, yeah. the, you know, the female, um, the, the Latina female, uh, attorney, you know, pop population is very low, but I think she did a huge job in inspiring a lot of people. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah we're, we're showing that, that the algorithm man works towards women so well. Like yeah. all they have to, you know, just, you know, just be a little, a little sassy, maybe a little sexy. And, I, I think oh. you have to you have to have the personality for it though. Right? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Yeah, because the thing is, like, e even content creators anywhere, um, you could be uh, like, for me, I watch a lot of uh, golf YouTubers, like Bob to Sports. Right. Um, the thing is, they're not great at golf, but the thing is, their personalities are amazing, and it makes you want to watch them because it's like this is such relatable content. Yeah. I'm someone who just goes to the course on the weekends. I don't have time to be practicing every day every on the range day. but even the guys who are super good at golf like good good right or um like like grand horvat or, or michael morris 
um, they're amazing at golf, but at the same time, you have to still have a personality. Yeah. If you don't have that personality on camera, you're not going to be people you're are gonna you're not going to get a good reception from yeah, people. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so I think I think social media is definitely the the next wave of trying to get your name out there. I think I still want a billboard, you know, hopefully in the near future I'm kind of looking into it, but uh I I really want to, you know, I capitalize on I can see it, dude. Yeah, that just would be such that. a weird feeling, man. What's just, your what, what's what's gonna be your 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 shtick? You know, what's what's your shtick? What, what do you d- see? D- it define being? that. I don't know. Like, there's the guy with the four, and then yeah. there's Brian Longcar, the strong what, what arm. What would be your 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 like, po- your, your catchphrase? You or, know what? I, you know, it could be a catchphrase. It could be like you know a nickname or you know. That's a good question, man. I think I'm gonna have to. It really, could be your phone number. <laughs> yeah, well, I would I would hope that's up there. The guy with yeah. the four. Your, friend, your friendly neighborhood lawyer. Yeah, he's something. almost like Spider Man. You know what? Know. If I ever get to that point, I'm gonna call you guys, and yeah. we'll, we'll come up with the slogan. <laughs> we'll come up with the we'll, shtick. We'll definitely yeah, come yeah. up with the slogan. We'll just put you in a funny hat, and yeah. <laughs> you'll be the hat guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lord Aaron Garza, that guy. <laughs> Vicky, you single-handedly ruined my career. <laughs> Nobody takes me seriously as the hat guy. <laughs> yeah. No. And well, um, I guess getting because like she got really big off personal injury cases, right? Gotcha. Oh hell yeah. Um, so. Uh, I also think that, uh, and going back to the whole, well, people try to get the the, the cheapest uh, insurance. Like, well, it's going to save me money, you know, right. month to month. I mean, at the point that you're going to need them, it's going to get, um, it's going to get really hard to get money from them, right? Right, especially when you need it. So it's it's going to be time to it's there's going to be a time where. You know, you get into an accident and then they don't have insurance. And it's like, well, my insurance will help me. No, they're not going to help you. They're going to give you very minimal money. If you do try to get money for them, you're going to have to hire a lawyer. Yeah. Even if you hire a lawyer, they're going to make the lawyer file a lawsuit. They're going to make them do discovery, do disclosures, request for productions, interrogatories. They're going to make you go through a deposition. And then they're going to try to drag this as long as possible. And it's like, you're my insurance. You know, I thought you guys yeah. were just helping me out. So yeah. if, if there's any advice I would give to anyone who's looking for car insurance or switching to car insurance, um, look at their track record of when people actually use them, how often do they, you know, actually Come help, through. help their yeah. insurance out? You know, I, I think that's, Wait, a, that's how, how do, but how do they, how do they find that? Like, how do I would you imagine know? like you, you could look at like reviews or ask people, you know, if they've been in accidents, like what was your, mm, you know, experience. what was your experience yep. with them yeah. like? Because, um, you know, and this is, you know, this is another good one. I just thought about, I needed to touch on this too, of like what to do when you do get into a car accident. Yeah. I think there's a lot of things people can do on their own that strengthen, strengthens the hell out of their case. You don't fight the guy or what? No, 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 <laughs> we're not, we're not, we're not going to pull a Julio. I'm just, <laughs> shout out to Julio. Shout, shout, shout out to Julio. Shout out to Julio. Man. Love that guy. I love you, man. I'm just kidding. Don't fight me. <laughs> yeah, but um, there's so many things you can do to strengthen your own car accident case. Yeah. Um, I mean, first things first, right? If, if you're way too hurt or, or, you know, you're, you need to go seek help immediately. I mean, your yeah. health is going to be more important than any right. sort of financial gain, right? right? Yeah. But, you know, let's say you're in a moderate accident, nothing too crazy. Um the first thing you should do is, is take pictures of both vehicles. You want to take pictures of, of all of them, you know, Evidence. the impact. Yeah. Because that will help tremendously. Um, the other thing that you have to do is call the police. You right. have to get a police report. Yeah. Uh, Cause if you can have someone who can, you know, document the accident, he's going to, uh, he or she's going to take statements. Right. Right. And they're going to be able to say, well, from your all statements, I can place X person at fault. So call the cops. Yeah. So call the cops. Yes. And so um, another thing that's going to happen is a lot of insurance companies will try to call you after an accident and they'll try to get you to settle out. And a lot of times it's going to be at a fraction of what you can actually get. Right. And so. Not only that, not only will they try to offer you something, but their person's insurance will call and they'll they'll have you on a recorded line. They're like, hey, like, is everything good from the accident? Yeah. If you say anything like, oh, I'm fine, I'm good, that statement alone is going right. to follow you for the entire case. Right. Like, and so it's like, well, you said you were fine. And so <laughs> you said you're okay. Yeah, you said you were fine. So, like, you know, what's up with all these like injuries yeah. you have now? Why did you go to the doctor? What you said, but um, I, I, I use the analogy of, 
Um, cause some people do take some time to go seek treatment, right? Or, yeah. or I got to take a piss real yeah, quick. No, you're good. Um, so, uh, it, it takes a while for you to feel those injuries. Right. Uh, I'll give you an example. Like, uh, my analogy is like NFL players, right? In the moment, like they're getting banged up, right? And yeah. they don't feel it. They, they're just, they feel fine during the game. But it's like you ask them a day after and their body feels like they got hit by a truck. Exactly. Like that's where that term, you know, you feel like you got hit by a truck. So it's like, even if you're like, okay, you know what? I do feel fine. It's whatever. Don't say that to the insurance. Don't say that to the person who, you know, who hit you. Because uh, once again, that statement's going to be used against you. Um, and who I knows? Guess, I guess, what, what would what would I say then? Like, oh, I mean, you just, could just, oh, sorry. Uh but yeah, you could just say like, hey, like you know, we'll we'll just we'll wait till the cops get here. You know, gotcha. you know, uh, d- try not to make any general statements about you know your injuries or whatever. Um, what else is there? I I think that's that's pretty much it, man. But uh, another thing is, if you want you know to maximize or legitimize your case, you want to see uh, you want to go get checked out immediately. Right. Um, and so uh, a lot of times, uh, us attorneys, when you hire an attorney, and that's I think that should have been number one, right? Like you need to call an injury attorney because these are all things people don't just know, right? They don't know how to do these things step by step. Exactly. So that's why like you need to call us because we're going to guide you through this entire process. But getting treatment immediately is such a huge thing because, uh, you know, let's say you feel fine, but it's like, Hey, we need to check you out. You end up going to a Cairo and they're like, well, Hey, like this doesn't look too good. Now I'm going to have to refer you to go get an MRI they end up checking the MRI and it's like, wow, like you have like a huge disc protrusion in your lumbar, yeah. you know, whatever the yeah. case may be. And it's like, now, then now you have to go get like, it, it's so bad to the point where you need to get like steroid injections or yeah. whatever to like help your pain. Like, and, and so what insurance companies will do is they will look at what's called gaps in treatment. So from the time of the accident to um, when you actually sought treatment, they'll use that and say, well, look, it took you uh, three weeks to go get treatment or it took your client, you know, a month to go get treatment. Like what's up with that? Yeah. And I understand like some people don't have health insurance and so they don't know um, what can happen, but um, you know, and they, they, I, you can bring up those kinds of excuses, but it's always best to just say, it just won't help your case. And so the good thing about personal injury attorneys is uh, a lot of times we can find providers who can work on what's called the letter of protection. So what that means is we'll front the cost of everything, the treatment, everything. And then the providers will, um, everything, everything will get paid for, uh, the treatment, everything out of the settlement amount. Right. And so it's like that way you don't have to worry about the medical bills. You won't have to worry about who am I going to go see, but just go do it. Yeah. And the, and also a, a really weird misconception is people ask me, how much money do you take to do car accident cases? And the simple answer is I, I don't I don't take any money up front. There's right. there's no amount of money I make unless I win for you. Right. Right. So I only make any money off of your case if I actually get a good settlement for you. I make sure that your treatment is paid for. I make sure you get money and then like I get, you know, a, a, a right. percentage. You get a cut. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's like a contingency fee basis. So right, it, right. It, like with certain types of cases in different areas of law. You get paid different. So people think like, oh, I need I need money up front. Yeah. To, to yeah, I know you don't need any money at all. Like, yeah. if you can have no money in, in in your account, if you need an injury attorney, you can go to them, and most, if not all times, all that stuff will be paid for. You know, not out of your pocket. They so. need through the insurance. Like yeah, the insurance yeah, absolutely. So the insurance, out. yeah, absolutely, yeah. man, absolutely. Nice. Yeah, no. You're just the more you know, like yeah, you know, like, yeah, and that's the biggest thing. How, how you're saying it's just that we know how we know how the process goes. We know yeah. you know A and B and all this stuff. Yeah, you know, all the things that could happen along the way. Yeah, and so I uh, and I'm I'm kind of glad I, I I came on because like you know uh, to the people watching, these are things that people do not know. They get exactly. at the top of their head, and so I think that there are a lot of it, and maybe that's another reason why I love TikTok so much. It's like. I want people to have this information as readily accessible as it possibly can be. Yeah. Right. It, Cause the more times that people can follow uh, these things or they yeah. can have that information on hand, it's going to help them out in, in their cases, whether that be 
criminal law or personal injury or even a little bit of family law. Yeah. I, I do a little bit of family law as well. Yeah. You said a year that you getting paid is contingent. So what if you don't win? Then I don't get paid. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the thing, right? If I can't get you money, I don't get paid at all. Yeah. So we're all. But then it. again, he's got like 12 cases. So then say like. Yeah. Is it some six, of it a waiting game? Like, damn, I'm, I'm hoping for some money soon. Say, no, no, no. Say like <laughs> six, out, six yeah. out of seven out of the 12, he does win. Yeah. That's like, you know, that's yeah. that's that yeah. revolving door of like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But well, I was going to say, is it like, is it like that sometimes? It, it's, like. It's different. I think when I do get clients, you have to manage client expectations. You have to let right. them know that there's a pre-litigation phase and there's a litigation phase. So a lot of times it's, it's short for uh, pre-lit for short. So I tell them, look, there's a pre-lit phase where, you know, you, you go get your treatment, you go get checked out. If you need, you know, an MRI, if you need pain management, whatever. That's not what you do before you go out to the club or what? Huh? Oh my, what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> Getting pre-lit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a comedian. Oh, what can I say? Yeah, yeah. That, uh, pre-gaming. You know oh, what? I'm going to use that one from now on. It's like, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do pre-lit right now. That's like not that. college day anymore, dude. We're mm -hmm. growing up now. <laughs> yeah, man. I just, uh, I watch Tombstone with my dog. That's all I do. <laughs> I don't know why I fall, I've fallen in love with that movie recently. Ugh. I don't know why. Oh wow, no, I haven't seen it. Yeah, you haven't seen you've it? Seen no, it? Tombstone. No. Kurt never, Russell and Val Kilmer. No, never, I haven't seen. Oh it. my I've god, never seen, man! Like the scene where he scalps the dude. Like, oh. wait, that's that's Inglorious Bastards. No, 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 Tombstone. Which or he fucking which tombstone? takes him out of the cone, the, oh, the cell. Oh yeah, fucking scalps his head, and then they flip him upside down, and fucking. Ugh. I I. I wow. you, I'm your I'm your Huckleberry. You never heard that term. <laughs> oh, I've I'm heard your Huckleberry. I, I've seen um I've seen jokes about it, but I never. Yeah, yeah no, that's that's, where that's, that's such yeah. a badass scene, man. Wow. That's where that's from. Yeah, Doc oh. Holiday. That's that's. You such should a, watch Tombstone. Yeah, yeah maybe I'll check like it out, dude. Yeah. No, it, it's you would like it. You would yeah. love it, man. Yeah. It's it's a very very good movie. Oh, hell and it's based on a true movie. story too. Yeah. 100. percent I'll check it out. Yeah, yeah. It, it was actually made in '93. So no, I was born in '93. Yeah, same, man. Exactly. Wow, same. See, yeah. Derek agrees. You need to watch Tombstone. I love Tombstone. <laughs> Damn, what the hell? It's a good you movie. You need to watch it. <laughs> Why are you just are you just getting shit on it in is. the comments? Yeah, <laughs> um, I love Tombstone. You need to watch Tombstone. Yeah, no, it's a great movie, oh, man. Wow, it's a be. really, really good movie. Wow, must be. Wow. You know, funny enough, I. You know what? I'm just gonna say it. my guilty watch right now. I love watching it. Is uh, Crazy Rich Asians. Oh, okay. I love. That I've seen movie. it once. I oh, love you know, I've, that movie. I've heard. I've. I haven't seen it, but I've, I you know. absolutely love that movie. I can watch that movie. It's like, so when I was in college, The Office was kind of my background yeah. noise. When I was like doing homework or whatever, yeah. that's kind of my background noise now. now. I just have Crazy Rich Asians on. Wow. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I can kill any Office trivia that I, I, I've watched that show way too many times. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I, yeah. I love The Office. Yeah, I'll check out uh, Crazy Rich Age Asians too. And, Tombstone first. And Tombstone. Tombstone, Tombstone first. And then Tombstone, Crazy Tombstone, Tombstone first before yeah. Crazy All right. Rich. All right. Do you know, do actually, that. Don't do that. one thing I, I, I before uh, we end anything, I definitely wanted to touch on some uh, stuff on family law, like common, okay. common, okay. Law, common yeah. law marriage. Okay. Is a big thing that people do not know about. Right. Yeah. Um, so you can you can really be married to someone and, and not have any idea that you're actually married. Yeah. Right. And and so there's always this misconception of like, oh, we live together, you know, we're we're common law. But there's there's more But they file single. Yeah. Like we're taxes and stuff, right? Yeah. Like, so, so it's it's like there's certain elements that you have to meet. Right. right. So one is you have to live together. Right. And so people think, oh, we live together. We're, we're calm. We've lived together for so many years. Like while the amount of years that you've lived together will definitely help, like your case and saying that there was some sort of a common law marriage, there needs to be an agreement to be married. And then you have to hold out to the public or to others that you're you're married together. Uh, right. You can't so just you can't just be like, oh, we live together. We're married. Right. Yeah. Because that, I mean, that would be. That'd be fucking dumb. That'd be like everyone like you're married yeah. to your roommate now. Like, what's up? Why yeah. would you do that? Yeah. So, um, like, there are things like if you can, if you for some reason put each other as your spouses uh, for like right. insurance purposes, like, oh, this is my dependent, this is my spouse, right? Or like, there's any legal documentation where you put them as your spouse, or if there's, you know, maybe you all got rings, or maybe you all texted about we're gonna get married on this date. If there's some sort of agreement. And then you're also, you know, maybe there are people around you that say, well, they always call each other husband and wife. Right. All of so those anything things. Anything can be used. Yeah. A lot of it's wow. what we call circumstantial evidence. Right. Yeah. And so it's 
it's one of those things where even if they find out there's a common law marriage, you have to still go get a divorce. Even if you didn't think that you were actually married, yeah. Texas law still requires that if they do find that there's a common law marriage, you still have to go get that divorce. So that's a lesson to all you men out there. Don't be calling your girlfriends your wife. Don't be buying her no fucked? ring. Yeah, don't am be, I cooked? Am don't, I cooked? Don't am be. I, don't be after you. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of guys that get like I'm screwed. Oh, that's it. Yeah, y'all, y'all better get ready for that. Yeah, oh, that, no, that. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, right. don't be trying to use that as game. Don't be like, oh, my God, you're my wife. Don't be doing that, all right? It's going to come and bite you in the ass. All right, question. Uh, my father got a copy of my birth certificate and had someone pose as me and signed over the property to get sold. And him and him home get all the money. And him, I guess, get all the money. Who is that? I'm sorry. Can you say that? that, that yeah, my father. Really complicated. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of... A lot of moving steps. Um, my father got a copy of my birth certificate. Okay, your father had someone pose as me and signed over the property to get sold and him get all the money. Wow. So he sold a property that belonged to Where her. He posed as her. Wait, so no, he had he had someone pose as her. He, as, he as, had, her. as his daughter. Like he said, this is my daughter. But it wasn't his but daughter. But it wasn't his but daughter. But it wasn't his daughter. No. That contract could be voided. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's just, I'm sorry. Like, I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. So, oh, yeah. That's the, a tough one. The, the father the, the had, had someone pose as his daughter. And someone pose as his daughter. To sign over, uh, uh, to sell a house. So who sold the house? The father. The father. Yeah, the father, yeah. So who did he sell it to? I don't know. I don't know, but he got all the money. That uh, part wasn't specified. Wait, so then why did he need the daughter's birth certificate? Uh, I guess to, to have that girl pretend that it, or that lady pretend she, that it she was her owned it. it was probably in her name yeah that's what i think the property was in her name right in her name in the real daughter's name so he used a fake yeah. daughter uh, yeah, to pose he as used a random person to pose as um as her, as her okay and yeah. so like well I, it just depends like in those situations it's like what sort of recourse are you looking for? Right. Right. Cause yeah. I think that's the first question uh, you always ask when it comes to civil cases. Like what are the damages? Like she put were, were kill you, him. Were, <laughs> <laughs> like, her. were you supposed to receive that money? You know, what, what, what sort of, you know, monetary right. uh, or what sort of damages did you uh, incur Experience. in these situations? Because a lot of times when people, I, I have it so many times where people come and it's like, I want to sue this person for this. It's like, did you lose any money? It's like, no, uh, she lost the house. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. No, if, if she lost the house, then yeah, she can look to avoid That's that contract. That's monetary yeah. value. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That yeah, was, like that was, a, so, that was a fraudulent deal. Like she can absolutely try to avoid that contract. Yeah. So, do you want the money or the house? Is the question. And then from there, there's different steps to do. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe or, she wanted to stay with the house, and so yeah. the house was illegally sold. Yeah. yeah. No, you can you yeah. can definitely avoid that out, especially if if they were impersonating someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can look to you can look to avoid that deal, uh, and then well, that's gonna cause a ripple effect because then the buyer will possibly, yeah, you know, get screwed, and then they might try to sue the father. Try to hire uh, somebody. Here's there. another level of, <laughs> of compli- complication. Oh my god! Is that uh, what happened? Was the house didn't belong to her, but it was willed. It was willed to her. Well, so, no, I, that that's that's fine. I mean, yeah. as long as it was in the will and the will was so you know properly probated, it it still belongs to her, right? Oh, yeah. So she can still look to uh, avoid that. But the thing is, it, it's one of those things where once again, it's going to cause a ripple effect because then, if the buyer um, bought it under fraudulent circumstances and there wasn't actually a good chain of title, then uh, they might be you know entitled to some sort of. Um, you know, compensation as well. Whether, and then you know, they're gonna sue you, <laughs> or they're gonna sue you. She somebody. might just lose the house either way. Like, yeah, it's yeah. gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be bad. <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny, <laughs> man. Right, you're hearing it first time from a lawyer. It's gonna be bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, as far as in the complication, if we're just, if we're just yeah. being honest, complication, <laughs> complication. Yeah. Wow. But wise, I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah. that happens a lot, dude. Especially. It's, well, it's it's funny, man, because a, a lot of times uh, things are very spe- fact sp- uh, specific. Right. Um. So. Uh, every now and again, especially with like criminal law, um, the devil's always in the details, even though the laws are kind of the same and every case kind of follows the same method, you really have to look inside the facts. So like with these kinds of cases, like I have to know everything before I'm like, okay, you know, here's what you can do because 
one little fact will turn literally everything around, right? Everything around. And so it's really, you know, I, I get a lot of general questions. Like, uh, I get asked a lot of shit where I'm like, look, man, I, I'm going to need to know this, 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 this. So, uh, I don't know if you've talked to other lawyers before, but we're very good at saying it depends. Right. Um, the devil's in the details. We need, we need, we need details. Damn it. Yeah. So, um, and so it, it's so funny cause people always hit me up. Like it's either on DM or they call me and they're like, yeah. Hey, like I need some legal advice for this. And then I end up having to ask them a million questions. Cause it's like, I can't be like, well, here's what you have to do. And attorneys have to be very careful of that as well, yeah. because we can face repercussions if we give bad advice. Yeah, because somebody yeah. told me to do this. Yeah, because then if they're like, well, yeah. this this lawyer said I needed to do this, and then now we're stuck in a position where our name's getting used to say we gave terrible advice to someone. Yeah, yeah. And so I know sometimes it can come off as like, ah, I don't want to give off advice, or like, oh, this guy's like a jerk. He doesn't want to help me out. You just need more No, info. but it's like, it's like I, I, I don't, I can't tell you from what you're just telling me or yeah. excuse me, but I, uh, or like, I can't just work off, you know, this general sort of state. I need to like sit down. I need to go through all these documents. Something concrete. Yeah. Like. Because then it's like, now I sort of have this, um, now I can work off this. You know right. what I mean? Cause, uh, you know, one, once again, one thing can really change the outcome of how you proceed with certain things. Right. Yeah. Yeah, man. yeah. Like if you cuss at the officer, that could really just ruin your yeah. entire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what was, uh, I want to know too, what was up with the, uh, the ice bags, man? The ice bag. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dude, that was such a sweet. Uh, yeah. I, I told. He thought it was a gun. Uh, I talked about it with Julie and that was such a sweet story of my beautiful, c considerate, caring wife. Uh -huh. And that I, I was telling her that I wasn't looking forward to practicing because it's so hot in the garage. So she bought you an ice. And so she, she was telling she was telling me, um, quick question: how much for how much is the charge for the initial consultation? Uh, it just depends on what kind of case. Yeah, well, right. that exact case, <laughs> the one about the house. Oh, the one. oh so okay, so I, I should expect a call soon. Yeah, yeah hell yeah, dude, your uh, numbers are yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, great, 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 great. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, well, I actually don't charge on certain civil cases. I don't charge anything to come in and talk to me. All right. Um, so mostly for divorces, I do charge a small fee just because. With those kinds of cases, I need people to understand I bill by the hour when I work right. on them. Right. And so I do that to show them I make money from my services with my time and my knowledge. Yeah. And so I want that to be something known right away. So that way, because uh, you have so many clients, you're like, well, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. And then you give them the invoice and they're like, well, what the hell? And it's it's like, you know, we I try very hard to not overprice things. So you're saying I, uh, divorced people are more chatty? Is that what you're saying? What do you mean? Oh, what? well, I think that you're you're in a very weird, uh, you know, it goes back to what I'm saying as far as these it's people a, are yeah. not in a lot of hats. Like I have to be a, sort of a counselor, right? Sometimes yeah. people just want it's to talk. It's a gray area. Yeah, yeah. Some pe uh, and yeah. they're going through a really rough time. I mean... You know, even now, like for me, like, you know, breakups are difficult. You know, yeah. they're not the easiest thing to go through. I can imagine having, you know, a, a spouse and, and kids and you bought a home together. And it's yep. that's such a huge decision and, and taking that, you know, that's uh, money. That, that, yeah, absolutely. And so but for the civil case. Um, yeah, just for general stuff. Yeah, it, it's it's you could just come through my door. We could talk about it. Kind come of right in. Come yeah, right in. Absolutely. I was trying to find. I love that under. soundboard so much, <laughs> yeah. man. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's like a second, <laughs> second nature to me. Yeah, no, I just see so you just like trying to try to hit yeah. something. Although I make a lot of mistakes all the time. It's new. It's yeah, new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you, know, yeah. You, know, you get better with it with time. You know? <laughs> yeah. In no, ten years, I'll be a black belt. On hopefully, yeah. yeah. Hopefully. In ten years, damn, we'll have AI integrated, and I'll just be able to, you know. I, I was gonna ask you, how long did it take to get your black belt? 10 years oh no it took me longer than 10 years it took me because i started when i was 12 i started when i was 19 my god it takes a long time like a typical for a typical like it's 10 to 15 years it, it takes it takes about 10 years okay like um that's typical if you compete at a high level and you just you're always competing it's you fresh. can get it in like eight years okay like uh but um 
It depends. It depends for people. Like there's some like you hear. I'm like at two years and I'm still white belt two stripes. Shut up. But also yeah. like I took a typical jujitsu journey to where like you know I, I was very serious when I started. He trained with and, MMA. Guys. And then around like blue belt level, I kind of like took a break and you know and then I started up again and it you know it's typical stuff. So. God, that's impressive, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, really it's just I, the way I say it with jujitsu, man. If you just you're consistent. Just naturally, you'll get better. Yeah. Just, just keep it's going. really like what you want to get out of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's Absolutely. the real question. Yeah. It, and like I said, man, like even when I was talking about like boxing earlier, like it was, I, I think combat sports are, are amazing, man. I, I really think they teach you a lot about yourself. You yeah. Know, kinda, I, I was, I was actually going to uh, say before we got on the, the similarities between, I think, golf and combat sports yeah. are crazy. Like, I mean, obviously, besides the physicality part, right, the mental aspects, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, even though like w with with fighting uh, or, or rolling, you're boxing every. Yeah, green. yeah, exactly. Like, you you have to you have to strategize, right? Yeah. You have to strategize how you play the hole or you have to play the course. But it also teaches you how you react under pressure. Right. Right. Because like I was saying before, when I first sparred, it was like tunnel vision, man. Like I was like, what the fuck? And so like then you get hit in the face and you're like, oh, my God, what am I doing? But and you're then, like holding your breath the whole time, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's super <laughs> yeah. hard. Like, in that, it's so funny because it's real easy to be on the bag and just like, oos, 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 yeah. right? But no. then, like, when you're fighting. Something's hitting you back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, and then, man, I did not know the conditioning it takes to. Yeah. Um, now, whenever I watch a boxing match, even if it's like, you know, eight rounds, I'm like, that's, you I know, think the longest I've gone was three rounds. Yeah. And I was dead. I was yeah. dead by round one. And I was like, you know, and you see those guys at the at the end of the rounds, and you have friends like, come on, throw! But it's like How they just they fought twelve standing? rounds, How man. Like I, I would have, yeah. I would have had a heart attack by now, man. I would, <laughs> I would have been gone. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of like boxing, a lot of conditioning, just yeah. like j just getting used to your arms being up for yeah. thirty minutes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, well, I would say even jujitsu, right? Because it's like when you're rolling. You're constantly under pressure. Like someone's trying to like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like it's it's a it's a constant struggle. Yeah. So like, you know, it's definitely an endurance test. But there is no conditioning like combat sports conditioning. Yeah. I will say 100%. But like going back to the golf thing, man, it's like um, it, it's really like it teaches you a lot about life, too. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I remember one time we golfed at Riverbend. Like back then I would get so mad because I played so much and I was playing terrible that day. But I think somewhere along the lines, I just learned to, you know what? If I'm gonna play bad, I'm gonna like, play bad. You know, I think I was playing bad too, but I was like, I'm still having a great time. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, absolutely, you know? man. And like, everyone I've heard that's like in golf, like really is in golf. Like they, you know, bro, is having it, a terrible it gets time. addicting. <laughs> it, it becomes like it gets a, addicting. like a, you know, like that's life, bro. It's like, really, yeah. really addicting, man. Yeah. Because what do you think it is about specifically golf? Well, I mean, it's just it. It's uh, like I said earlier, man. It's like. You're not okay. playing against other people. Yeah, you're, you're really, yeah. you're really playing against yourself. Okay, I'll oh, give wow. you, a good, I'll give you a good example. The spiritual journey, like, dude, for sure. I was man. in law school when I. Well, my dad tried really hard to get me into golf when I was young. Like now, in retrospect, I should have just stuck with golf. You should have played in like high school. And yeah, school. yeah, it been second nature. Yeah, I tell my little cousin all the time, like, dude, like, you're, you're gonna be a senior, like. Just start golfing now, you know. Just start it. I promise. I'm telling this you. When you chance. get, yeah. When you when you make it to my age, you're gonna understand. Just do it now. But like, I I, don't, uh, uh, I think when I really fell in love with golf was my my friends in law school. That's when I really started getting into it around like 2017, 2018, and they took me out there. Like I kind of bought some cheap ass clubs, like a box yeah. set from like Academy or whatever. And then, um, I mean, I was hitting it. Like shit. I mean, yeah. just like any beginner would. I I think that's also cool about golf is it's a great equalizer. Like no one, you're not just gonna step up and and be Tiger Woods. You you have to really practice at it. But I think the second or third round I was out, I hold out a chip from like 30 yards out, and ever since then I've been chasing that feeling. Yeah. I have never like you know like even like hit like hitting a bucket in a big game or scoring a touchdown like. The, nah. th then that doesn't i mean a feeling of holding out does not compare oh my you know? god yeah. what the it hell are you guys describing and it's this? just like it's crazy that yeah. you, you you put it you know put this little ball in this little hole like 400 yards away in four shots and it looked amazing yeah all right and landing that shot or laying in bed with a woman which one <sighs> landing that shot 
Landing that shot. A hundred times over. A thousand <laughs> times over. What the hell? Let me tell you, there is no better that feeling. That shot under. gets you that woman, Mickey. That's what you don't understand. Yes. 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 That shot gets you that woman. That's you, even need, you don't even need the woman. You yeah. Got yeah. The shot. No, I mean, yeah. it's just like <laughs> no, yeah, no, golf Mickey. is such a hard sport that like when you perform well, <laughs> yeah. it is such an accomplishing feeling. Such an accomplishing feeling. Especially yeah. when you're beating Julio. Oh, <laughs> my God. See, I don't want to start anything. Because in this weekend, I'm going to get texts. There's going to be side bets. It's going to be real bad, man. Let's go. But, $5. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but the, the cool thing, too, is, like, even if you're not having a good round, just being yeah. out there with your friends, it's it's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's like fishing to people. You know, I know people who like to go. My, my brother's really big on, oh, I'm going to go out on the boat. It's like it's like his little getaway, you know? And my my job it really requires you to be available at all times like it doesn't stop right right and so the golf course is probably my only time that i'm just focused on to one get thing. away yeah and so it's so nice for those four hours you know whatever you know if it's packed five hours to get away not think about that and just and have a good just time with your friends yeah. focus on the ball you know? yeah the ball. absolutely but you know if you start playing like shit it's like hey you know what? i'll have a miller light and that's then fine. you'll have you know? that one yeah. shot dude, that you're like I'm that's bad, that's yeah. the fun part that that seems to me to be the fun part is that you just get to drink outside yeah and and mm-hmm. you and what you're doing isn't there's not that much like you know you're responsibility within it yeah, yeah just, it's, exactly. it's so funny because it's like also, golf is a sport where it'll be like 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> and and like you just see guys slamming Miller lights in yeah. the parking lot. And it's like, and it's totally acceptable. It's totally socially acceptable for That's people fine. to just like, just be pounded up. That's fine. And it's like, you know what? This happens. You know, everyone's doing it. Who cares? I love those cultures, man. Like, I love cultures to where people just like, it's always chill and it's always like you know well i I will say too that sometimes you run into people that you don't like on the course right Uh, because especially other groups like dude i think when we went they were trying to like oh my god yeah (laughs) like they were almost like was gonna fight i I was so mad because it was like they were getting on us for i forgot what they were getting on us for and they had like a six-man team yeah and they were like, oh yeah like oh, we had like a ride along that, that's what it was we yeah. had like a ride along who wasn't playing and then they got super pissed that we were using up an extra cart but the, so the general rule is that you can only have four people in a group yeah yeah these guys had like six to eight people in one group and the reason that they don't have it is it takes up so much time but it's like this dude was harping so much on us and he didn't say anything to those other people. Yeah. But like, even then, like you'll have some people who like are super hardcore, like rules people. Yeah. Like they want to follow like the PJ tour rules or the USG rules to like the T. Yeah. But it's like, dude, I'm out here on the weekend. Like, unless I have money on it, like unless I'm actually yeah. like there's money. And even then, like if it's five bucks, I, I already care. paid my yeah. dudes. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm like, out here. unless there's like, even then, like if, if we're playing for like five bucks, right? Yeah. You know what? Take it out of the mud. You can hit it there. You can get a yeah. better life. But yeah. if we're playing for like serious money, that's I'm like, okay, you know, then time and a place, right? Yeah. But you don't need to, you know, time and a place. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So like even then, like golf is getting a lot more casual. That's one thing I love about it is people are kind of accepting, you know what? It's okay to go out in basketball shorts and a hoodie yeah. and in a t-shirt to go play. Cause it used to be super country club where you, know, you had to wear the collared shirts. You had to, you wear had to have a belt, hundred yeah. dollar pullover. Uh, you oh, have to damn. wear the, yeah, dude, the nice but, shoes. If you don't have all this, we're not going to allow you to play. Dude, I remember growing up, I had to have my nice set of, of clothes. If I was going to yeah. go to like a specific spot. Like, yeah. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. No, man. Hey, you know what? I'm, you, you convinced me I'm going golf. Let's go. <laughs> Great. Let's man. Go. Absolutely. If there's one thing that we got out of this live stream today, it's I'm gonna uh, make uh, Mickey gonna walk go. the nine at Butler. We're gonna yeah. vlog it too. <laughs> yeah, 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 we're gonna vlog it. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, and a lot of you guys go early in the morning too. Like what when, the during hell? the day, it's after so fun, three, man. It's yeah, like yeah, but I don't like waking up early. <laughs> you know the worst, yeah. the worst, the worst tea times, the seven a.m. tea times. Or when you're like at a bar with your friends, and it's like, and then it's like one in the morning or two in the morning, and then y'all have had a few, and it's like, you know what? No, I'm gonna book the tea time right now. You get online, you go book it, <laughs> and then like you wake up at like five thirty six, and you're just like, Fuck. oh my god, yeah. you're like on the verge of death, and you have to go play. It's gonna take me six holes. To, yeah, to, to just get get conscious up. again. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, and I can't. In, uh, either way, That's regardless. That's drinking Budweiser's at seven in the morning. All right, we'll 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 do it. We'll uh, vlog it, and Dude, um, we and we'll have a good time. Nice. There you oh, go. Yeah. All right. Well, anything else you want to uh, uh, leave us off with? Uh, I was just gonna say, you know, if you're arrested, uh, <laughs> you're, you're in need of a divorce. You know, you you've just been recently injured in a car accident. Uh, you can call me at nine five six six two six twenty three zero six. Um, you know, uh, I, my office is in San Benito. Um, I always make sure I can provide a personal touch with all of my clients and I've always had nothing but great reviews. Hell yeah. And, uh, yeah. Hey, thanks so much for, uh, coming on Aaron. No, really, absolutely, really man. It. I, 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 you know, I, I really wanted to, man. So I'm, I'm really grateful you all allowed yeah. me to come on too. I feel like we've only touched like on the tip of the ice. Oh man. Still much, I could, there's we, still we, so much more. We can, like, yeah, we can go on for hours. Maybe I'll be a reoccurring guest. Who oh, knows? Oh, yeah. 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 It'll be, uh, Aaron, the God killer instead of JB, the God killer. Yeah. He needs another name. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. His name is uh, Aaron. Lawyer. Why did Why did a murder come out? Yeah. Murder. Came. Look up law office it's of Aaron. Because I, I, I put up uh, I put up Aaron with two A's. Yeah, that's there you I, go. That's where I screwed up. Uh, is this your? Is this yours? No. Or no? Oh, no. do you know? I'll just put the the Google on there. All right. There you go. go. Right there. That's my website. Right there. Oh, right there. Right yeah. on the right side. Yeah. Here you go. Okay. Law office of Aaron David Garza, and uh, he will. Um, yeah, he will help you out. And uh, click on the website thing. All click right, click on, on the. Yeah, Hopefully right they got the right one. Sometimes Google's a little. Um, this is your website, or what? yeah. yeah oh, perfect. Okay, so yeah, reach out to the law office of Aaron uh, Aaron Garza, and yeah, he'll help you out. And there's Dude, his there's, number right there's there. There's your there's your uh, your billboard. Yeah, yeah there, there you go. go. There perfect. you go. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Did you had it the whole time. But yeah, <laughs> thank you for coming on. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it was great catching up. And yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. Take it easy. Thank you, everyone, Hell for joining yeah. the stream. Yeah. Have a great rest of your night. Goodbye.